number of people that he touched that still continue to affect college football seems to be endless. One of those men was Pat Dye, the head coach at Auburn. Those who knew the bear look at Pat Dye and see some memories. For the people of Tuscaloosa, those memories, at least in the last three years, have been painful. Photographs and memories Christmas card you sent to me All that I have are these To remember you He was a man of pain. He was a very physical man. He was a very strong man. A mind, a body, a will. Yet he was a very compassionate person and very understanding. Of course, I think the world of Coach Oates Bryant one of the greatest men of all time, in my opinion. You know, nobody was going to measure up to Coach Bryant's standards. I mean, as, as not a, I mean, you're talking about the best football coach that ever lived. In the Southeast Conference, Pat Dye's standards are, however, coming close. Over the past seven years, his University of Auburn football team has won more games than any other SEC team, and the Tigers have played in five straight New Year's Day bowl games. Dye has also sent more players to the NFL over that time than any other college coach. Everyone knows about the number one draft picks. From Auburn, Bo Jackson. And Andre Bruce, linebacker Auburn. But every drafted player coached by Dye has survived the NFL cuts and played at least one season. You know, at some point in time, some of them are not going to make it. I'm fully aware of that. But uh, these guys know how to work. Uh, they know what it takes to win. And uh, I think people like them on their teams. What makes Pat Dye's success hard to swallow in Tuscaloosa is he was one of the Bears' prized assistants. A lot of Bryant's former players, like Ray Perkins, coached at Alabama. But Dye was a star lineman at Georgia who played against Bryant's teams. I studied Coach Bryant very carefully when I was on the staff there, and I think I, think I probably studied him a lot closer than maybe some guys that had played for him. We were close, and we had a special kind of relationship, and, and he knew how difficult it would be to maintain that relationship with me coaching at Auburn. Dye ignored Bryant's recommendation against taking the job at Auburn, where he's copying the Bears' success, but not his tower coaching style. Dye is an in-the-trenches coach who prefers the personal touch. He's very close to all his players, and we're, um, we touch base with him all, you know, during the season, after, after the season, and he's, he's strict and he's, he shows a lot of discipline, but we all know that um, that's what we need right now, and that's the best thing, and he does it in a way that we, we can look up to him and look, look at him as a, more of a father figure than a coach on off the field. Don't blame Bama fans for being confused when they see pictures of Dye in the tower acting like the bear and when they hear him speak just like the bear. I'm not happy with the way I prepared them and the results I've gotten. They're going to play like they prepared to play. And, um, and if they play poorly, that's been because they've been prepared poorly. Die acts, sounds, and wins just like the bear. Auburn fans are happy. Alabama fans should be grateful that Pat Dye hasn't elected to change his hat just yet. Every team, Danny, has one game that leaps off the schedule at them that they look forward to. And for Pat Dye and Auburn, it is the Iron Bowl matchup with Alabama, which for the first time ever is going to be at Auburn. Now, Dye has won the game the last three years, and as an Alabama alum, I'd love to know what your feeling is about the sense in Tuscaloosa. Well, to sum it up, I guess in three words, very, very bleak. Auburn has passed Alabama as far as the strongest team in the state. What about the rest of the Southeastern Conference race? How do you see that being played out? I would pick, um, for the third year in a row, I'm picking Auburn. They just simply reload out. LSU, because of their offense, they'll average about 28 points a game. I'd have Georgia probably right at third. Vince Dooley's retirement, but he still left Ray Goff a great team. Mm -hmm. Fourth, Alabama. Alabama has probably the best, they have the best defense in the league and probably as good a talent as Auburn, but they'll only finish fourth. Well, if that happens, Bill Curry better power up his deflector shields once again. That's it for the Southeastern Conference. When we come back on the race for number one, a look around the nation and the other powerful conferences that will make up this year's race. Stay with us.
I think that, that you got to keep this, this football game in perspective. I think it was a lot of things that, that should be obvious to you, is that, that uh, we were playing a football team that we had severely outmanned, um, and that kids played hard and, and fought hard, but they just, they just don't, didn't have the talent on that football team that, that you have on this one. This is a, a nice start for you. Again, keep it in perspective. Build on it. Let's let's uh, let's take advantage of it. Uh, we we we. There's going to be some days in front of us now where we got to reach down and get something extra, <coughs> and it's probably going to happen next week. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dunn. It was a beautiful September evening in Auburn and a season opening 55 to nothing victory over the University of the Pacific. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review and congratulations Pat Dye on a great win. Well, thank you, uh, Phil. We didn't really know what to expect. I didn't and, uh, you know, I've said all along that I like this football team and I do. I just, I know we've got some tough days in front of us because we are a very young football team and and the game last night, we were really not ever challenged and got uh, some big plays and long plays and took Pacific out of it before they, before they had a chance to make a game of it. And, but, um, you know, overall, I was, I've been pleased with the, with the year-round uh, work that this team has, has done. The coaching staff has done an outstanding job. And I, uh, you know, I... You know, I like where we are. I know, like I said, I, you know, I've been optimistic about this football team, and a lot of people may take it the wrong way, but uh, I realize that we're a young football team, and, and, and we're going to have some tough days. And, and, um, but I think that it's got a chance to be a very good football team before the year's over if we can stay healthy. And it was a tremendous night, uh, Pat, for, <coughs> uh, for the Auburn offense, and particularly for Alexander Wright, who had... Uh, Touchdown catches of 78, 73, 60, and 41 yards. And that is an Auburn and a Southeastern Conference record for receiving yardage in a game. We talked to him in the dressing room and a number of other players. You, uh, you broke the record by a lot of yards, and I think you broke the conference record, too. So that's uh, nice, I guess. You know, when you, when you got on the field playing, you don't, you don't think about, you know, going for records. You just... You just get in when the coaches tell you to get in and run the play that they tell you to run and hope that you can execute it and, you know, play team ball. But as the record comes along, that's all right, huh? It's all right. How about the quick screen for an opening play? <laughs> well, um, no, we knew we were going to start off with a quick screen. Uh, we knew they were going to play us uh, three deep, which is going to leave leave it open. And, um, you know, I just threw it to Alexander, and after that, you know, it was all him. Think of a way to start a day, huh? It is. Uh, you know, when I saw him, um, he dodged one play. I knew it was all over. You know, he took it, I think, 80 yards. And, uh, you know, there's, there's not too many people in this conference that can catch him. I'm surprised. I didn't, I didn't have any idea that I was going to run it that much. But, uh, you know, I needed to work. And, you know, I was really anxious to show, show the coaches what I can do. And, I, you know, I really want to be a part of this team and be a part of the outcome this season. It probably won't be near as good on film as what it looked like in the stadium if, if it goes by what first games are usually like. Uh, we had them out man. It was pretty obvious. So probably be next week before we find out really what we're what we're good at and what we're not somebody said this was a talented side of the line what, what do you what do you think Ed? i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> opening night not bad uh it was all right i feel for the first game against pacific but um with teams like southern mississippi and uh, kentucky and tennessee i feel we're gonna play a lot better I know you guys want the coach to look at that drive where y'all knocked them back on about seven plays running in the end zone running it the whole time, weren't you? Oh, uh, yeah. You know all the night. We had a lot of mistakes and everything, but, you know, it's it's all um, in tune to get better as the season rolls on. Well, it gave uh, the young guys a good chance to get in there and get a feel for a game-type situation, so I think it was valuable mostly to the young guys, though, even though Pacific was not as strong like our SEC opponents will be, but they gave those young guys a lot of experience and a lot of playing time. Well, um, you know, I think we played pretty good today as a, as a unit. We swapped in and out a lot. Um, we had a lot of guys play today, and uh, overall we played uh, played pretty good, but teams we coming up on, um, you know, they got some great offensive lines, Southern Miss, and they beat Florida State, and uh, uh, we got a big big challenge ahead of us. This is, this is only the first game, and uh, we got a big thing going for us here. Kicking off the ground, how'd it go? Uh, it went uh, real well tonight. Uh, 
I was a little uh, apprehensive uh, on my first kick, and uh, it's a good thing it was an extra point, uh, so I could go out there and uh, just see how it was, because I'd never, never really done it in a game before, and uh, so I was a little nervous about it, but. Uh, Kicked the extra point good, and that uh, helped my confidence out. And the 40-some yarder was a pretty good And the, the 40, uh, 41 yarder, it, it helped me out a lot, too. Then what, she? Auto parts, they go where I go, to All Pro. All Pro offers over 100,000 parts daily for the professional. <laughs> the Jordan Hare Football Palace, you need to see it at night. It's really pretty, isn't it, guys? Well, it was, a, it was a great night. You know, the, the, the game last night, I... I haven't talked to the coaches about the grades or anything like that, but I was really pleased with with, with all aspects of the game except the play of our specialty teams, particularly the tackling. And we didn't really make anything to happen on returns. And and um, you know we we're working very hard to be a complete. Here's the first play of the game. You're gonna see a great block right here by Dale Overton, as Ed King, uh, Bob Meek ran over one, and and Alexander outran the rest of them. <laughs> Perfect executed quick screen and and. Uh, you know, I, Alexander has had a, a great fall practice. You know, all our, our other starting wide receivers have been hurt, and they okay. Here's a good lick by by uh, Greg Ogletree and Steve Brown. <coughs> we played a lot of people last night. I tried to, to, to find out how many we played. I, you're gonna see a lot of walk-ons playing in the ball game right here. Two of them started. Tad Ogletree and. Dale Overton started the ball game, and here we start a, a drive where we're just running the football straight at them. And <coughs> we show five of the seven plays in this drive. This is a real good, running drive. Good blocking. Uh, Alex Strong, uh, Pat Ultra, John Hudson, Ed King, Bob Meeks, uh, Brad Johnson, Mark Rose, strong, tough running inside. Just... Uh, to be a complete football team, you got to be able to do it all. As Stacy Danley running again, to he was Pacific did a lot of blitzing, and and uh, here you're going to see us taking it in for the touchdown. A little little sweep out of our wishbone set. They uh, they did a lot of blitzing and bringing pressure, and and uh, basically the only way that you can handle it with a running game is to run straight at them. You can't uh, you can't run lateral or parallel to the line of scrimmage. You got to hit those creases and holes where they leave from. And great play by Larry Young on the on the kickoff coverage. And uh, again, we play playing a lot of folks. There's <coughs> uh, Richard Shea and, and uh, David Rocker and John Wilson and as fake punts. And they had about a yard to go and they made about a yard and made it. But it was pressure. Craig Ogletree coming from the backside, makes a sack. There's John Wilson, David Rockson, Quentin Riggins, all around the football. And we are we are very, here's, a, here's a, another big play to Alexander. It's just a simple Brent draw pass. Same play that he scored against Tennessee with last year where he catches the ball coming in the, in the across the middle and hits a little crease and takes a distance for the touchdown. <coughs> Fine tackle. I, I believe that was uh, Ricky Sutton, a true freshman that that uh, got his baptism last night. And Lamar Rogers around the ball as Ricky again, Quentin Riggins, Wayne Bowsman looked like he made a lot of plays last night. Um, and Walter Tate and, and uh, Eric Ramsey tripped him up, along with Darrell Crawford. It's uh, Craig Ogletree pressure. Clint Riggins recovers a fumble. It's Walter Tate and Tim Cromati. <coughs> it's a bootleg. Excellent executed play. Reggie throws it to Alexander and makes a fine catch with somebody all over his back. You're going to see excellent running room. Stacy runs it down to the four or five yard line. <clears throat> Come back and throw the bootleg. Reggie hits Chris Gray for the touchdown. Well executed play. For the night he had nine of ten for uh, yeah. Four we, I looked at this last night on the replay and they actually had all four receivers open. It was a dealer's choice, really. <laughs> and he comes again. Good pressure. I'm not sure it looked like over three and and uh, uh, 
Lamar Rogers knocks the ball loose from him, and, and uh, Corey Barlow comes up with a fumble. Here's a nice play right here with, with uh, Frank McIntosh. That free safety had, had kind of been getting out of the middle, and we felt like that we could get the post thrown down the middle. And Frank comes in. It was 28 to nothing, and, and uh, he makes a perfect throw, and Alexander mm -hmm. makes a great catch, and, and I guess that made it 35. There's a pressure by Fernando Horn. <coughs> and in fact, Fernando playing with a broken hand, and uh, as Lamar Rogers, and you know all these guys that are playing that uh, haven't played a great deal of football, and but there's talent there, and if they just keep working and 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 time and experience, uh, you know they got a chance to develop and come along. As constant pressure as Larry Young, and I guess the hardest hardest lick was hit last night by the defense was by Alex Thomas, a receiver coming across the middle. <coughs> That's Victor Hall on the sideline there and Pat Austrey. There's pressure again, Elton Billingsley and, and uh, Walter Tate and uh, Fernando Horn back there around him and at the half it's 35 to nothing and and really the only thing that I could could complain about at halftime was uh, we had messed some tackles on kickoff returns and punt returns and and uh, we, we had thrown one interception and had one five-yard penalty. So that's what you're looking for in an opening ball game is, Good is discipline and concentration and, and not being, uh, you know, not playing sloppy. And, and uh, I think we, for the most part, it looked like we had good effort. So uh, it, was, it was encouraging. See a lot of new faces in the second half. We'll return in just a moment. There's a shot of that grand ballpark you I don't tell you, see. We got one that runs like I did, too. Oh, really? Huh? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he's gonna do it. It's gonna look like the same song, same verse coming I'm up here pretty you, quick. You, you, if you don't, if you don't think Alexander can run like a did, just just watch his second play. I don't know who is that. Uh, John Wilson and David Rocker. <coughs> Pressure on the quarterback is so important. Some of the folks up in the high stands and there. It just makes so many things happen. Here it, it is, right here. First play of the second half. We really didn't intend for this to go for a touchdown, but I couldn't help it. As the Ed King downfield did a great job to keep from blocking that guy. Stacy Danley, Bob Meeks had turned his guy upside down, and Dale Overton had gotten a great block. And uh, he is now the uh, all conference uh, <coughs> receiving leader for a game. Well, we didn't. We really didn't need the touchdown, and, but I knew that he liked one reception. A four yards from breaking the record, and, and uh, that's all we intended for him to get was one reception and four yards, and, and retire him for the night. Of course, he ended up getting the touchdown record also. <coughs> James Joseph running, and James and Stacy both have had great preseason work, and uh, they didn't get as many yards rushing last night as as uh, as I would have liked for them to gotten, but they. We, the game got out of hand and we didn't get the football to them as much. I wish we'd got, probably give them a little more work. Their day will come, I feel certain. <coughs> Walter Tate, big Walter, 320 pounds now. He's lost about 10 pounds since he's been at Auburn. Hope he'll lose some more. I don't know who that was, Quentin Riggins or whoever uh, caused the fumble. And and, uh, and uh, Roy Hunter comes up with the fumble. <coughs> There's uh, Darrell Williams. Some call him Electron. It's in there behind our backup offensive line there. Jeff Catullo it hits a little crease right there, and there's Tony Russell downfield blocking for him. Kelly Brooks, Anthony Brown. Now, this is something you Travis, were interested in seeing. Well, we this. played a lot of plays, and, and uh, <coughs> uh, I might, might have mentioned Jeff Catullo and uh, Tim Tillman and uh, Travis Galloway and there's Frank McIntosh coming out from pressure and running, I think, 30-something yards. There's uh, mm -hmm. Hank McLarty. Nice catch right here by, by Darrell. And uh, he actually played better than his practice field, and, mm -hmm. and that's not uncommon. That was a nice block on picking up the blip by John Stewart and, and uh, almost a... Perfectly executed play. Sue said that was a catch, Coach. 
<coughs> she might have been right. You can't, right. you're not supposed to be able to, as uh, Chucky Johnson, and it's uh, good to see all these guys get a chance to play. As another sack by Ricky Sutton and uh, Chucky, and the sack was by Fernando Horn as Brad Johnson and Rob Selby. Horace Stroud. Just, uh, I believe Burt Lively is out there. Tim Tillman. New quarterback. There's a, a Corey Barlow. Came in and took him up down for a touchdown at the end. There's a nice run here by Alex Strong. Alex Strong's had a great, uh, fine off uh, preseason. And <coughs> good block right there by, I believe it was Kelly Brooks. And, uh, there's a nice play by Corey again to Chris Gray. And uh, Horace Stroud and Kelly Brooks are all walk-ons. As uh, Alex Smith in the game, he'd been hurt a little bit. He played more. There's another true walk-on. Evan Hines made a nice catch. There's a naked bootleg here. Corey, uh, Corey Lewis, Lewis pulls it down and, and runs it. There's Andy Stidfold. Another true walk-on that's not on scholarship. <coughs> Dale Overton here. And Dale started the ball game. And, uh, made a nice catch and run. And here's another play to Kelly Brooks. And Kelly's a, a walk-on pullback and takes it down to the four-yard line. And Electron's going to take it in from there. Lamar Woodson and <coughs> we didn't really need that last touchdown, but you hate to not give the kids a chance, to, you know, at the end of the game. And I guess one more didn't hurt. And Coach Harris has got his kids playing hard. They're well coached football they team. Hard. They don't have the kind of talent that that we've got at Auburn. And and uh, but they'll improve and they'll get better. And when the level of talent comes up, then they'll be they'll be building the winning program. We'll return. As we you, might need that defense against Southern Miss, Mississippi. I was going to say, as you thought might happen, they uh, after that big win, they got tripped up by Mississippi State. Well, I, you know, I thought that uh, Mississippi State had a chance to, to win the ball game because I think that uh, Mississippi State's got a, a fine football team. I, you know, I didn't see them play uh, in the spring, but I talked to people that did see them uh, in the spring and said that Mississippi State was an entirely different football team with a, the difference in, the, in going to the running game and, and the changes that they made with their defensive scheme, defensive staff. And, and, uh, 30, minute, 30 seconds for Southern Miss, Coach. Brett Parr. Well, you know, they've, got a, they've already proven what they can do. And uh, it'll, be a, it'll be an entirely different atmosphere than what it was last night, I can assure you that. And, uh, but, you know, we, we need to know where we are, and we'll find out against Southern Mississippi. Okay, and it's a 6 p.m. kick Saturday night at Jordan-Hare Stadium, a big game, Auburn and Southern Miss, and we'll have the replay for you on Sunday. Thank you. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria, Birmingham. It's a great job getting after that quarterback, getting down the middle of folks, making things happen, doing what you had to do. And, uh, you know, we, to be honest with you, we, we, we kind of hung you out there a couple of times offensively, and, and, uh, but you did the things in the second half, kept them out of the end zone, 
and uh, it was a it was a big game for you, an important game for you, and one that that uh, you needed to win, and we needed to. We needed the toughness of that football game in the second half. We can learn from that. It's how you react and respond and, and, uh, and play, and we had to play for 60 minutes, so that was good for us also. We're on the right track, but we're not a finished product, man. Got a lot of work to do. This is the Auburn Football Review with... Another beautiful Jordan-Hare sunset last night and a rock-solid defense combined for a 24-3 Auburn win over Southern Miss and uh, made an old coach feel pretty good, I would imagine. Well, it was kind of old-fashioned, the game was, and, and uh, of course, that, you know, that doesn't bother me a bit in the world. <laughs> I like uh, the fancy stuff about football, but I like that old hard-nosed jaw-to-jaw stuff, and that's what it was, and that's what you always get when you play Southern Mississippi. Coach Holman uh, and his staff had... They're well prepared. They're a good football team, and they're a tough, hard-nosed football team. And we knew that coming in, and we didn't, we weren't disappointed. And they carried it right down to the wire. We won the game at the end, and uh, from a standpoint of scoring another touchdown late in the game. But uh, through the fourth quarter, the game was, you know, uh, they were, they were in it. And uh, you know, I, I was mighty proud of our football team. Uh, we didn't have a good day throwing the football, and. Uh, you know when you when you when you want to throw and you are throwing and you're incompleting passes and kind of puts the pressure on the offense and uh, to to come up with a big play running the ball and and uh, we were we were able to control the football on the ground and and uh, the offensive line I thought did a great job and the backs running and and um, and then of course defensively we had some great performances on that side of the football. Okay, let's go into the dressing room now and talk with some of those Auburn defenders. He ran around out, out there a little, but we got out them too, so we're expecting him to run around a little Third bit. Third quarter was crunch time. Oh, man, it was very crunch time. He was he was trying to make something happen at all costs. And we were after him real hard, and he got away from us a couple times, but we put it on him a couple times also, so we did our job, I think. We stopped the offense one time on our own fourth on fourth and one. Could have been a big turnaround in the game, but we went out. And um, held him to the field goal. Offense owes y'all one. You won one for them tonight. <laughs> huh? Well, I think it works both ways. When they had to keep the ball and drive downfield, when we need a break, they did that. So, you know, it works both ways. They had their mind made up, Corey. They were going to work you tonight, didn't they? Yeah, I kind of think so. You know, Ben, as I'm the youngest back there, I, thought, I knew I was get a lot of action tonight. You know, I just thought I need to just step up a notch and just play better defense. But you all held up well, huh? I think we did. We held up. Uh, pretty good you know we as a whole our secondary we played great you know it wasn't too many passes too, not long passes and then it wasn't too many passes really thrown see we had them covered all night and the defense kept far up on the run so that gave us that helped us out a lot you didn't lose an hair tonight worried about far no I, I did i did that's why i shaved because i knew it was, was going to come out anyway you play better <laughs> i think i did better i mean i got tested this week more than i did last week so. That was a pretty good test of the defense, because that guy can really swing it. Yes, he can throw the ball real well. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know he could throw it that deep, but he did, you know. And, you know, we accepted the challenge, and we, they, didn't, they didn't get in the end zone, but they did get that one field goal. But I think we did good enough. Was it fun the third quarter when you knew you, the defense had to win the game? Well, that's not – with the type of quarterback um, he was, he wasn't the kind that you could really become comfortable with, with the score. But um, after he kind of went late down into the fourth quarter, yeah, I mean, it was great to just sit back and relax for a change. The running game was good tonight because of a couple of fullbacks. Well, uh, I've been practicing all week. Coach tell, tell me every day to, um, that I should get better every day, and that's what I try to do. So I go out and work hard at that. You knew you were going to play a, a lot tonight. Well, I didn't know I was going to play as much as I did, but I have a feeling that I would play. Y'all want to get a lot of credit in the stats, but uh, I think you and Kelly get, ought to get some credit to, for the running game tonight, don't you think? Yeah, we blocked pretty good tonight. Uh, that's, mainly, that's mainly what we've been working on this week, uh, blocking and trying to stay low, get up under the linebackers and you no know, technique. Kelly and, uh, and Alex Clay has made, made a difference in this uh, backfield, hasn't it? Oh, most definitely. I mean, those guys have been, been tremendous this week, and, uh, they, and it showed today. They came out and they put hats on everybody, and we were moving people off the ball. That's what we really want to do. We want to put hats on everybody and be very physical. Those guys prove that they can do that. And everybody's fresh, huh? Oh, most definitely. We got a lot of repetition and uh, 
try to substitute me and then play it on. The P 83,000 plus at Jordan Hare, fifth largest crowd in Auburn history. Quite you know, a night. It was a beautiful day, and, and it was uh, great to have our man back and, and the students back in town. If we start right off running uh, football and running straight at Southern, and, and uh, you know, we, we want to be a balanced offensive football team, and you got to be able to, to, to do both, to, in my opinion, to have a great, great football team. And, you know, last night, obviously, we weren't the sharpest with our timing and throwing the football, and the Southern had a lot to do with that. And um, it was a night for the guys in the trenches and running the football and being mm. tough and hard-nosed, physical, and playing defense. And you see, that's what we're doing right here. John Wiley put a hit on him. <clears throat> I, uh, I think uh, there's uh, Stan Kunis, Frankie Stan Kunis making a nice play, and <clears throat> we stayed after the quarterback. We had a little little blitz on right there with uh, Cole Barlow coming out of the... Uh, coming out of the secondary and, and uh, David Rocker and his James Joseph running again and it's Chris Gray down there blocking and, and of course the offensive line you know they're the unsung heroes on a game like that one last night and just look how long Reggie stood back there with the football in found James Joseph open and, and uh, got the ball to him big play but uh, Brad Johnson and Mark Rose and John Hudson, and Ed King, and Bob Meek, and Rob Selby, and Jeff Cotullo played a lot last night, and our tight ends, Chris Gray, and <clears throat> Pat Autry, and, and uh, Victor Hall. All those guys, like I said, they're the unsung heroes, but they're the ones that make it happen in a, in a game like that one last night. Good pressure. We had him on the run all night long. <coughs> Parv is an is a outstanding maneuverer. And uh, here again, you can see there's uh, Craig Ogletree and Corey Ballo. Craig was the one that actually put the hit on him. And Steve Brown and, uh, and Craig Ogletree. We are playing a lot of folks up front defensively, and we're just uh, playing team football. And there's Quentin Riggins and, and uh, I guess, Steve Brown there. And it... Uh, we come back and again hand it off and those two big old running backs, James and uh, Joseph and Stacy Danley, both are punishing runners. This is the touchdown drive. <coughs> Some big holes. As uh, another one that, that should need the credit that you pointed out earlier is uh, Kelly Brooks, a true walk on, not on scholarship. <coughs> and uh, number 35 there. There's Stacy again. And uh, Alex Strong. Both of them. Uh, there's James running down close to the one yard line. And Alex Strong is, is going to take it in. Offensive line does a good job coming off the football, knocks him back in the end zone, and he gets it in. That's a good drive. And, and uh, it's, it's nice to be able to to take a conservative drive like that and move it. And uh, there's, wow. looks good right there. That's uh, Fernando Horn and big Walter Tate and John Wilson and Larry Young. And we got him on the move again. And he throws it late, scrambling. And there's Quentin Riggins. Johnny on the spot and knocks him loose from it. Looked like Quentin made a lot of plays last night. And I know that that guy right there had a great night, Lamar Rogers. Start of a big night right there. <coughs> Benny Pierce, and now we alternated uh, Benny Pierce and, and uh, Clarence Morton in with Larry Young and and uh, Craig Ogletree. And Reggie's back again throwing, and, and, and you couldn't see all of it right there, but Alexander Wright made a tremendous move to get open over the middle, and it was a big third down play, and we converted. And, and here, and I, I'm sure that the coverage had a lot to do with it, but our protection breaks down, and they get to us. And, you know, I... I just, uh, as Tim Cromartie and folks in the secondary had to do a good job. M nice play by David Rocker. There's 
Craig Ogletree back here again getting a sack and <clears throat> I don't know how many sacks we got last night, but uh, four or five. There's another one right here. Now, I don't know, you know, to me, that whistle should have blown with him back there on about the one yard line. I don't know where they end up spotting it. <coughs> but uh, again, we get it back, and this is right before the half now. And uh, Reggie hits Alex Strong with a nice play. We had gotten thrown for a loss or something and had a long yardage situation. And Reggie does a great job of scram scrambling out of here and making the first down, getting to the to the uh, marker. <coughs> and here he's going to run again. I just soon him not be running like this. People won't know how much when he's going to run the football, but you watch his lick he takes right here. Now, I don't like our quarterback getting hit like that, but again, there's Ed King and Reggie calling timeout, stopping the clock, and come back and little Dale Overton, another guy that's making a tremendous contribution to this football team and a true walk on from, from Hackleburg. Hey, yeah. And uh, I accused him from being from Bear Creek the other day and he said, no coach, he said. He said, you ever been? I said, yes, yeah, been a long time. <laughs> so Auburn scores with 15 seconds on the board and takes a 17 to nothing lead at halftime. We'll be, de we'll be back in just a as you say, for the academic. Uh, scholarship fund, which is a well, I'd like to. I, it'd be nice if all 500 of those honor students could come to Auburn if they want to come to Auburn. One quick announcement the Smoky Mountain Auburn Club will have a big pep rally on the night of the September 29th. That's Friday night, uh, two weeks hence, uh, the night before the big game in Knoxville, and that will be at the uh, Hilton Hotel, the downtown Hilton in Knoxville. Make your plans for that. And we'll be back to start the second half in just a moment. Second half, the Auburn defense is going to step forward and keep control of this game. Well, it's, uh, again, it's a just a good old hard-nosed physical football game. And, and just, you can see it start right out there playing. And uh, it looked like it. Uh, Third and five. Darrell Crawford right down the middle of them. There's John Wilson and Richard Shea coming in. And they're all trying to get a piece of them, and they're having fun playing defense, and we're getting a lot of folks around the ball. There's Ed King and Bob Meeks and Make James Joseph and the tight end and tackle, and I'm not sure who it was. Got them around the corner, Pat Autry and, and uh, Rob Selby. Nice throw and catch, Reggie and, and Alexander. Fourth and one play coming right here. <coughs> this is the worst, worst thing that happened in the ball game right there. And we actually had a hole to run in, and I was, uh, you know, 99 times out of 100, Stacey Dan was going to find it. But uh, we didn't end and didn't make it, and and uh, that gives uh, Southern Mississippi some momentum. And they come back, and they're going to move the football right here, and a little innovative play right there, and Clinton knocks him out of bounds, and they move it down, and but we come with some big plays right here to keep them from getting a touchdown, just swarming and harassing, and <coughs> they end up kicking the field goal, and it's four, uh, 17 to 3, a 14 point game, and so we're in, a, we're in a football game right here. And Herbert Casey does a good job of running the kick out to around the 40 yard line, breaks the tackle down, makes a couple missing out there, keeps on running, and excellent, excellent field position after their score. <coughs> Reggie throwing to Alex Strong out in the flat and picks up seven or eight yards. There's a play right here on first down that uh, we thought was there and actually ended up getting the formation called to the wrong, called the wrong way and, and uh, it just, we didn't get it executed properly, but it might have had a chance if we'd have, we'd have got it run like we practiced it. But that's... Guy has a cannon yeah. for an arm. <coughs> Eugene Rao, Auburn product, outstanding football player for Southern. As Lamar Rogers harassed him all night long, and here he comes again. Richard Shea dropping back into coverage there, and this is the big play. He tried to hide that ball on his hip, but he didn't fool Lamar, and we get about a 20-yard loss. And and uh, as Lamar, and he's just uh, really had an outstanding fall practice. And, we still running up in Adam James Joseph and fullbacks blocking and the offensive line coming off the ball. 
Outstanding punt right here and got us out of the hole. <laughs> Good coverage as wow. Benny Pierce and, and uh, maybe Mike Smith. Mike is a true walk-on freshman from Memphis, Tennessee that has done an excellent job in fall practice and adds good coverage by Corey Barlow. Pressure by Fernando Horn, Craig Ogletree. Wow. Lamar Rogers. And Lamar Rogers should get a sack right there, Coach Hall. He forced the, <laughs> the grounding of the ball, and it was a big play in the game, and it put the ball on about the five-yard line. <laughs> 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 Here's another play. There's Lamar again. Goodness, I tell you what, he was all over the field. Causing the fumble, Craig Ogletree recovers it. Takes only three plays to get it in now. Here's Stacy Danley running hard inside. And James Joseph is going to come back and on the counter behind Ed King and Bob Meeks and Pat Autry and Rob Selby. And Comes a touchdown. Uh, Mark Rose or Brad Johnson's in that uh, at guard, and we come back and run the power trap to Stacy for the touchdown. <coughs> but I, I was very pleased in, with our offensive line and the way they played, and defensively we made a lot of things happen. And and Southern Mississippi is a good defensive football team. There's Steve Brown and. Just uh, as Stacy again, just running straight at him. We just we did nothing fancy. Just it was a fine block by Stacy Danley and the and the wide receiver. And I wasn't sure who that was. I, I, I think maybe it might have been a freshman, Tony Russell. <coughs> Run the sweep out, get field position, and and uh, they coming back and. Getting in the late stages of the game now and fake reverse. Fine play by Corey Barlow. He was a busy young guy. Yes, he was. And, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not sure. I haven't talked to Coach Dennis. It's a long pass that uh, Ral caught. I'm not sure that it was his, his man. I think we might have busted the coverage. And the final is 24 <coughs> to 3. We'll return in a moment. We're in t uh, Tennessee and two Tennessee weeks, and unbeaten Knox teams. Oh, my. Tennessee and Knoxville. That's enough. Rocket top. Our players know something about it. And it be a will, great football game. I think it's going to be televised on CBS. It will be a tremendous game, and we'll be off next week. Bo, uh, Auburn is off next week. We'll be back in two weeks with Auburn, Tennessee. Thank you. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers in the River Chase Galleria, Birmingham. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Channel 12, Montgomery. I'm a, I'm a little bit at a loss for words because I... I didn't, I really didn't, I didn't think we'd be manhandled the way we were up front, offensively and defensively. I'm mighty proud of you for <coughs> coming back in, in, in the second half and, and giving yourself a chance to win. I hope you can learn something from that. They look like Auburn out there today. Having fun, knocking folks down, making things happen, running through people. Just uh, every phase of it. I think you got beat by a pretty good football team. I don't think it was, uh, I don't think you got to be ashamed of that. Well, we're going to play a good football team next week in Kentucky. We're going to play one in Auburn the next week against LSU. And then in Tallahassee, Florida. So we got them, we got them coming one out right after another. All of that we can't do anything about, man. The only thing we can do anything about is ourselves. This is the Auburn Foot Tennessee 21, Auburn 14. And Coach, uh, you look waterlogged. I think everybody was waterlogged by the time that one was done. Well, the best thing, we all got home safe. <laughs> yeah. But it was, a, it was a long day, and 
uh, you know, it was obvious that uh, Coach Majors and his staff had his team well prepared, and the kids, they got, I think they got a good football team, and they played, they played hard and, and played good, and uh, basically just uh, whipped us in every phase of the game. It wasn't, I, 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 I came home last night and looked at the tape, and and uh, evaluated it from watching it on the field yesterday, and and uh, I don't I don't know that we've ever been more soundly whipped in every area, coaching, offense, defense, kicking game, every phase of the game. Tennessee whipped Auburn yesterday, and and uh, you know the 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 thing that we we've got to learn something from it, and. Uh, It'd be a disaster if, if, you know, if we played a football game like that and lost like that, that we all as coaches and players uh, uh, didn't learn something and, and benefit from it. And if we got the kind of kids that I think we got, then we're going to we'll learn from it and get better. And same thing goes for the staff because I think that uh, there's no question that Tennessee did some things that, that uh, might have been a little bit unsound offensively, and, or not offensively, but defensively. And... Um, and, but they, which indicated to me that they've done a great job of scouting us, and and uh, and, and we should have we should have done a better job from from our standpoint to either take them out of it or take advantage of it or whatever, and and um, and then of course on the on the defensive side of the football, it was obvious that uh, they were running the football and they couldn't they couldn't throw it, and. Um, you know, we should have we should have done a better job of getting getting our people a little closer to the running game and and uh, do something to try to help them. And and then of course the players themselves. I mean, you know, it, like I said, when it, when you lose one like that and you get beat like that, uh, you look around, you start second guessing. Uh, I start second guessing myself, and then you look at the offense, what you're doing offensively and defensively, and and it's easy to make excuses and 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 I say, well, we ought to be doing this, we ought to be doing that. When, uh, when it boils down to really blocking and tackling and fundamentals of the game and being sound and, and, uh, and playing hard. Uh, we go, I look at the game and our kids are running to the football, but we're not running to the football with the same intensity that Tennessee is. Okay, and we'll return in just a minute to look at the first half. It's the right color. It's the world's greatest football machine. As we pick up the action late in the first quarter after a snap into the end zone has given Tennessee a two to nothing lead. Well, a lot of people probably want to know about our snapping situation on the punt. Uh, Ron Birchfield is a good defender. He has a great interception on the part of Elton Billingsley. He gave us great field position, and, and uh, we make one first down, and then they kind of stuff us, and we don't get it in, and uh, and then we get a field goal block. And, uh, you know, you 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 you, you would go back and look and, and second, like I said, second guess yourself. But here we we come there. They do a good job of playing our screen pass right here. That's either a good play or a no play, and that was a no play in a third down situation. And and uh, again, they do a good job. They penetrate up the middle and block the field goal, and uh, that's three points. If you had to take those three points there and the four points we gave them on the bad snap, that's seven points, and that's what we got beat by. We had some good plays defensively, and uh, you know I don't know how they how they graded, but here's David Rocker coming, causes a fumble. Larry Young gets on it, and we got the ball out in midfield, and and uh, it's a uh, you know we're back in the good field position, and and got a chance to to get something out of it. Here we have an excellent play. That was one of the times they were lined up in that unsound defense, and, and uh, we hit the tight end on the crossing route, and then we ended up getting a clipping penalty and took 15 yards back away from us. And a little safety uh, did a great job right there, breaking on the football, and yeah, we have trouble handling the ball. And I think the bad snaps and the weather and everything had, had uh, Chris Dickerson I don't know if you would call it shook up or what, but that was a here's a here's a play right here that that uh, just broke our back and as far as a, a long play. Uh, you know, we we pride ourselves in not giving up the long run and not giving up the long pass. 
Uh, we gave up the long run, which resulted in seven points, and we gave up a long pass that resulted in, in three points. And uh, we're, not, we're not getting a lot done running the football. And uh, if you can't run it, then, you know, it allows them to tee off, and they, they help us out here a little bit with a 15-yard penalty. And we take this one down, and... and is this one we take down for a field goal right before the half? Uh, no. Anyway, we got the ball in good field position and have an opportunity. And there's the there's the unsound defense that they brought right there, but it took, created a problem for us because we didn't pick up the black backside rush. All right, here we go through another snap. I started to talk about the snappers. Travis Galloway, our snapper last year as a true freshman, and, and snapped every snap we had last year. Has been hurt, hyperextended his elbow against Southern Mississippi and. Has been out, and then and then Bron Burstill has been out with a lawnmower accident in the summer. But he came back, and he's been the best snapper that we had. So we went with him, and you know it was his first game. To, there's David Rocker and and uh, Craig Ogletree and Quentin Riggins, and the uh, we got good pressure on their quarterbacks, and didn't do always do a good job of tackling them, and but. You know, we harassed them enough to where their passing game was not affected. Here comes the running game. Drive. The uh, when a team's ready to play like Tennessee was yesterday, really when you, when they get to playing defense, look like they got too many people on the field. <laughs> the uh, there's a nice throw and catch, and that was another time again that they were lined up and playing playing a little unsound in the secondary, and we get a big play off of it every time one of them. Misses him, there's two taking his place. But that's the way defense is supposed to be played. There's a nice little crease running right up the middle. Takes the ball down around the 20 yard line. And uh, this is a third there, down from play. From there, we, get, uh, we end up with a third and two. And of course, we're behind, what, nine to nothing and uh, 11 to nothing. What is it? 11. 11 to nothing. We have to make a decision. Got to score twice. One, but win anyway, so we go ahead and take the field goal and and make it a, a eight point ball game. And again, there's good pressure. There's Craig Ogletree and and I guess Trace uh, David Rocker again. We did did a poor job of playing the draw yesterday. Poor tackling right there. Reaching and grabbing. You can't do that against great backs. And Tennessee's got two of them in Cobb and Webb. There you go again. We stop him here, and and they have a we have a critical third down, third and eight. They run the bootleg. We have him contained, miss him. He scrambles out, throws a throws up a prayer. We got three guys back around. That guy beats us and out jumps us for the ball and gives him the ball at the 15 yard line. And then they they take it down and kick the field goal from there. We still, you know, we had some like I said, we had some. Good plays yesterday, but the consistency of it in the long run, and it, you know, it just was not a very pretty sight as far as our defense is concerned. They take it down and get the field goal right before the half, and that was a critical play. Burke kicks a field goal, and it is 14-3 uh, at the half. Coach, we'll be back in just a minute. Now the rains are really coming in the second half of this game. Here's the opening. Uh, kick off of the half. Well, we, we we come back and of course the first five minutes of the second half is always vitally important and and we just uh, let them make a couple of first downs here. They, Hinton, Hinton makes a good run right here and that's the best thing he does is pull it down and run it. Nice tackle by Corey Barlow. Quentin Riggins and Craig Ogletree. There's Lamar, Lamar Rogers and Elton Billingsley. We're going to learn a lot from this film right here. See who played well and who stood up in there and was a man when all this was going on and, and, um, and see who played hard throughout the contest. There's a nice run by Stacy Danley. There's that little safety again, number seven, that played a great football game for him yesterday. 
John Hudson snapping now. Yeah, we went to John. Of course, John is, you know, we, he can snap and did snap, but we've been using uh, Travis Galloway and, and uh, of course, John, you try to rest him in the kicking game as David Rocker and Darrell Crawford and Quentin Riggins as Fernando Horn making a play. And they have to punt. You know, it's a, it's, it's, this is a strange football game in a way. Uh, it come back and hits uh, Alexander again on the turn route. Here's a play we get a little momentum going and the and, uh, ball comes out as wet and slippery and they do a good job of putting a hat right on the football and it pops out. As Webb, the freshman, is going to be a great back for him. Makes a little play. We make a nice play on the option here. Nowhere to go, and Eric Ramsey comes up and makes a, makes a play for about a four or five-yard loss. Took him out of field goal range and, and uh, put him in a fourth down situation. Had to punt to us. Fourth quarter now. And we're coming back on offense now. And, and that uh, was a catch and an interception and a fumble. All in one, but they ruled it an incomplete pass. Here's the big play. Is it throwing to Alexander deep? And it was just a straight fly pattern, and Alexander with the speed just ran by him and, and uh, Reggie got him the football and and we are certainly back in the football game. Now this is probably the best play of the ball game right here, just a straight little isolate with three point game here, fourth quarter, and really Tennessee had dominated the football game. And um, you're going to stop him here? Yeah, we do. We hold him right here, and we get the ball back. But we just we not got enough stuff to to make it work as fine play by Eric Ramsey. That was a third down play. We come back on offense and, and just can't get can't get anything going. Make a first down right here on a quick screen. Get the ball out around the. Their punter really had a good day in the rain. Punted the ball well. Well, they make a nice interception right here. The ball's a little high, and Greg couldn't quite bring it down, and they make an interception. They take this one in the score. Nice call on third and whatever, and they execute the screen pass very well. We poor tackling. David Rocker comes downfield and makes the play. Looked like David Rocker made a lot of plays in the ball game. As this Looks like you're running through us like you had to practice earlier there. There's another one in for the touchdown. This is kind of a walk-in deal, and that's a sad-looking crowd right there. They did a great job, and our fans did a super job at the ball game yesterday. Uh, Bill, I deeply appreciate all the folks that made the trip to Knoxville and supported the football team up there, and believe me, they were... They were they were visible and they were, you could hear them on the sideline when we try. Anytime we did a little something to encourage the fans on the field, they responded in a, in a positive way. It's just that we just didn't get enough done. Two minute offense now. This is, uh, you know, this is, this is nice, Phil, but, you know, it's nice to be able to do this kind of thing here, but the, uh, you know, the game's, the game's been played. I mean, we got to, you got to have this, and but it's uh, well, you go for the field if goal. We'd, if, we'd, if we'd have been doing what we should have done the whole ball game, then we wouldn't have been in a two minute offense. We'd have been running handoffs to try to get the clock out. And uh, it's a perfectly executed uh, onside kick right there. Corey Barlow comes up with it, Jim Von Wild kicked it. And uh, we got the field goal, and we back within seven points and a seven points and a, and a two-point conversion. We win the ball game 21-22. We're still in it. And Reggie's doing an excellent job here on the conditions. I mean, you can see how wet it is and, and uh, throwing and catching. And 
at, uh, that big guy right there was, they were doing a good job of blitzing and hanging their big old tackles and ends on the line of scrimmage and see him hanging right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the fourth down play right there that ended the ball game. But uh, they were blitzing up the middle and spying the ends and, and uh, they batted down two or three balls in the, during the course of the game that, that, um, that hurt us. But it, it, the bottom line is, is uh, you know, Tennessee and, and Johnny and his coaching staff and their football team was well prepared, ready to play, played hard. And, um, and, you know, we just didn't measure up. Now, the thing that uh, I, don't, I don't really believe that we're as bad as we looked yesterday, and Tennessee's probably not quite as good as they looked yesterday. <laughs> so, you know, we're not out of this thing by any means. And um, I know that I'll get a lot of advice from a lot of folks this week about what to do and how to do and what we should have done and what we shouldn't have done. And uh, there's no way that I can, I can take all of it and, and use it. So we're going to get the staff together today and, and talk about it and analyze it and get with the players. And, and uh, we'll be back on the practice field tomorrow trying to work our problems out and get better and be, go to Kentucky with a chance to win. We'll be back in just a minute to talk about Kentucky. Well, Kentucky coach was dry and rested watching that yesterday. Well, that's what I told our squad after the game yesterday, that they were sitting up there, you know, resting and relaxing and getting ready for Auburn. And uh, they're a big, strong football team that's got a great defense and a big, strong offensive line and a great tailback in Rawls. Outstanding wide receivers and, uh, you know, I. I we, we've got to play a lot better if we even think we got a chance to beat Kentucky. And the game will be on uh, TBS at 11.40 Saturday, which will be good on the road. You get to play early. Well, I'm glad we're playing up there in the daytime instead of at night, so maybe that's a plus for us. Tennessee now is the uh, front runner in this league, wouldn't you say? Well, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I, it depends on, I think it, I, I think it really think it'll boil down to Tennessee and Alabama in the Alabama game. Right. All right, that's it for this week. Join us next week for Auburn and Kentucky. Thank you. Almighty, he ran right through two men. Herschel ran right over two men. They had him dead away inside the nine. Herschel Walker went 16 yards. He drove right over Orange Church, just driving and running with those big fives. My God, a freshman. 15-8. You think this isn't big right here? Do you realize what has happened in this thing tonight? Uh, I think it was that night we felt like we had something very special. It was almost like I was in a dream. You know, I really can't recall too much that happened in that game because it was almost like I was dreaming. I remember the collision of Bill Bates and myself. And that's about it. Everybody else had brought back the other part of the run to me. But the collision is about the only thing I do remember. Now, a lot of people bring that run up to Bill and myself, but we try to forget it a lot. I always say I think Bill was off balance. He didn't realize that I can run as fast as I could, and I got onto him too quick. And he was not, he was, he wasn't set at the time. And I think that night against Tennessee was like a dream, an opportunity for me that I can't remember. It was a foundation for me for football. You know, it was a tree that had grown into, uh, you know, an oak tree that's got so many branches now where my talent has branched out in so many different fields for me now. I think it was very important. And the reason I say that is people always say you got to finish well, you got to finish well. But then when you start, when you start off well, that's when you're going to finish well. So I think to start off good, to start off on an up-tempo is when you're going to finish on an up-tempo. And I think that's what that game did for me. You know, you did it in front of, you know, 90,000 people. Now, that's a lot of people. You made believers out of 90,000 people. And, you know, that's when things are going to work for you. And I think that's when it started working for this, what they call the Georgia Dolls.
I'm Greg McGarity, Assistant Athletic Director at the University of Georgia. It'd be very difficult to move to Georgia. win for you and I think I think the the probably the hardship that we placed on ourselves probably was good for us uh, even though I didn't like the, the turnovers and the things that happened out there with our offense it probably put more pressure on the offense and the defense to have to come back and do what you did at the end to close the game out it's a great win for you don't ever doubt that this ain't the easiest place in the world to play and uh, it was it was it was big Let's, let's grow from this. I mean, you, all of you know, there's not a guy in here, a coach, player, or anybody that knows that we can't play a lot better than we did today. Let's just keep pulling together, keep having faith in one another, and grow a little bit each week. We got, to, we got a mighty big challenge in front of us next week with LSU. the Auburn Football Review. Welcome. A pretty Saturday in the Commonwealth, as they say. Auburn 24, Kentucky 12, and coach under the circumstances, uh, maybe as big a win as Auburn has had in a while. Well, it was a big win. It's all of them a big dope, uh, Phil, but I think that uh, the win was significant in view of the fact of what happened last week, and I was particularly proud of our uh, coaches and players and everybody last week. Going back to work and, and uh, putting the Tennessee game behind us, and, and even though we made some mistakes turning the ball over offensively, I think overall that, that we made some progress offensively and defensively, and, and you can see in the game that the tackling was a lot better and, and had a lot more people around the football, and of course we, we turned it over uh, to our offense four times, so uh, there was a lot of positive things about the game, and, and we, you know, I, th I just think we're still a young football team, and we're still an awful long way away from being as good as we can be. A lot of young guys came on and played well. Well, we played more people yesterday than we played, uh, you know, in a, in a game of that kind of all year. And it was, um, I think it paid off, and, and uh, it's certainly going to pay off toward the latter part of the season. Okay, let's go into the Auburn dressing room now and talk with some of the players right after the game. Preparation that we did last week was real tough. We were in pass three days, and I think it paid off. A lot of young guys grew up today. A lot of young guys grew up last week, and they know what it takes to win now. A lot of hard work. Do you realize what a big play the uh, two-point conversion was? Oh, yes. I, you know, I knew somebody had to come up with one, so I, you know, I felt <laughs> I had to come. I got cut at first, but then I didn't give up, so he cut up right into me, so I just had to make the play. We rotated in like every four, every four, four plays, and uh, I think that kind of helped us at the very end. You know, they were getting tired. They didn't rotate too much on the offensive line, and uh, the way we rotated, it just kept everybody fresh, and we were coming full speed, just coming and going. You know, we had some big plays, and I think that the big plays really got us, got us out of some jams. I saw it coming, so I knew what I had to do as soon as Reggie got me the ball, and uh, I shouldn't got off, and uh, I just started messing the end zone after that. Yeah, it was a great way to start. I mean, I was very excited getting in the end zone. As I caught it, nobody was in front of me. And you know, that was shocking. I got in there and looked up the fans were hollering. And that's me. I was really excited. You know? And then the guys on the, on the team came and congratulated me. It was a great feeling. At times, we, the turnovers were something that really um, dampened our spirit a little bit. It sort of got us down, but uh, Reggie got us back together. He called us a little meeting on the sideline. And we decided then that we was going to go out and we was going to play football. Auburn football, and that's what we did in the third quarter, and, and controlled the ball. 
The Riley's home and the Riley's car are both insured by Alpha. Well, great day for football. Uh, Go ahead, Coach. Great Back day for football. It was a little cloudy when it started, and then the sun came out. And, and uh, 50 to degrees. It was a game, is a game that we needed to play one like Kentucky and being a tough, hard-nosed physical football team. And uh, we kick off to them, and, and they move the ball down the field and, and uh, get a miss a field goal. The field goal kicker. We kind of had a tough day yesterday, and and um, we we come right back on offense. And uh, is this the drive we take in for the touchdown? Right. Field. Right. We, uh, James Joseph runs good inside. We started James and Stacy yesterday, and they was Alex Strong running inside. And so the offensive staff had an excellent game plan for Kentucky. Third down play here. Big play. This is a, something we put in last week, and and. Uh, Alexander is good protection. Alexander and Reggie executed it to perfection. Another third down play. <clears throat> There's Stacy running good. We just, uh, I, I, I think we're still trying to determine exactly what our personality is going to be offensively. And uh, there's an outstanding play. Same play that he completed to Alexander. He just went to a different receiver. And, and uh, Alexander did a great job right here. Good running on the part of Greg, but did a great job right there keep from clipping a guy <coughs> and then turn his back on him right at the last second. Scored right in but, front of the Auburn crowd, too. But uh, when defensively yesterday, we, we played in spurts a little bit. I mean, it was uh, overall, we played pretty well. And I tell you, that quarterback is a big play right here. There's D'Amico Anderson and, and uh, Bowser. And <coughs> like I said, we played a lot of people yesterday, and I think it paid off for us. Dennis Wallace got that ball. As Reggie throwing to uh, James Joseph, I believe that was a key third down. Uh, third and four, right. Play that uh, kept the drive alive and good running here on the part of Alex Strong and fourth and one. Victor Hall and Alex Strong making the <laughs> first down and. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a great play right here. First reception by Pedro Cherry, and uh, he caught it coming across the middle and got hit, and he kept his balance and turned and went back into the end zone. Pedro hit him perfect, and, and that'll be good for him. And we've got some young young receivers that uh, are getting better every day, and and just we're gonna play them all. And <clears throat> Vine play by Quentin Riggins. That ball came out again. We did a good job defensively yesterday with four takeaways. And Rawls had minus yards. <coughs> For the ball game? Yeah. I didn't realize that. Baker's running there, and you can see we got a lot more people around the football. And that's Tim Cromartie and, and Walter Tate and Richard Shea played in the off and played nose guard. I've never seen a team catch as many tipped up balls on offense. Most of the time the defense is catching them, but the. Uh, uh, Kentucky had an extra week to prepare for us. There's Darrell Crawford and Corey Barlow making a play. There's a, almost an interception by Craig Ogletree. It was a great play. And, and uh, there's Rawls again. There's, there's Quentin and Craig and Frankie Stan Kunis and Fernando Horn and Pressure. It's, Maggard, that quarterback, has got <coughs> did an excellent job of moving around in the pocket and getting away from the rush and, and picking up a receiver. Mm -hmm. They do have an outstanding kick right here and got us backed up and we serve them one up right here. That uh, we got to you get backed up like that and you say don't throw it, but. You got to throw it sometimes to get off the goal line, and that play, that guy made a great play on the ball. <coughs> so they have it Victor at the 16. The and they do a good job right here getting in, the, getting the ball in the end zone. Right? Again, they used all type of pass protection, and and it was effective for them here. They run the option, and Maggard does a good job of getting the ball. You can see how hard he's going to the goal line, and. D'Amico Anderson and, and Darrell Crawford keep him out, but they get it in the next play. And What's the point now? <coughs> this is something that we haven't done a lot of, but Darrell Crawford breaks through there, and, and uh, 
Bluffs the extra point. Kentucky comes back on offense. We can't move it, and they come back. And we're going to play, like I said, some spurts of defense right here that uh, were very impressive. As Quentin Riggins, good pressure on the quarterback. Quentin makes a play on the screen. There's Lamar Rogers and Benny Nelson out there. And so Ricky Sutton makes some plays yesterday and he just uh, played a lot of folks. And, and hopefully we're going to be better because of it. We'll return in just a minute. The people at Colonial Bank are a lot more than... Auburn uh, Learning for License program is already bearing fruit of some scholarships have already been awarded. Absolutely, Phil, and if you haven't got yours, you need to get it. It's a great way to support academics, and it's a great way to identify that you're an Auburn person. Just uh, $50 over the regular price of the tag. At your, at your, wherever you get your tag, the normal place you get your tag, they can uh, handle it for you, and... Uh, it's a great way to support education, particularly at Auburn University, and in this day and time, one of the best investments we can make is to Absolutely. send students to, to school who need to go to school and who have the ability to learn and to, to do well. We will, uh, we will come back and see a wild third quarter when we return. Uh, the way Coach Jordan coached, uh, the influence that he had on the players at that time, uh, uh, helped you to deal with the uh, uh, the problem that you have and how to deal with people. And that's what about any business is, is just dealing with people. You know, most people have rather be anywhere uh, else except at the dentist. And uh, it's just a challenge to try to make them uh, comfortable and relaxed and uh, get to talk a lot of football. Where do the pros go when they need auto parts? They go where I go. Wow, third quarter. And <clears throat> it ended well, though, Coach, with that start of that great it, drive. Right, there's a fine play by Darrell Crawford and and uh, Lamar Rogers and Quinn's out there and as Lamar and you you again you're gonna see a lot of folks getting around the football and and there's no doubt that that uh, we got better last year last week as a defensive team. Have a nice hole inside there and and. Uh, Break up field in the second edge comes up and makes the hit. Uh, Corey Barlow and Frankie Stancunas. <coughs> Darrell uh, Lamar Rogers and Frankie and not sure who the other one is up on the thing. It has a tip ball and a un unusual interception. That ball was lodged between <laughs> Craig Ogletree and, and John Wiley and John Wiley claimed the interception, but he did get the interception. Well, Coach, he needed it. That's the first one he's had in a good long while. <laughs> You can see, we uh, I believe it's the next play. The very next play, we come right back and turn it over to Kentucky again. Reggie hits the tight end, and, and he fumbles, and as Dennis Wallace and Craig Ogletree and Quentin Riggins. And they start at the 22, <coughs> so they got to hold them out here. Right. As Dennis making a nice play right there, and, and uh, that tackle probably saves us a touchdown. And Third. Craig Ogletree again. Makes an outstanding play, Quentin Riggins and Dennis Wallace and Corey Barlow. <coughs> they missed the field goal. Uh, on big third down play, and here we get coming with pressure, coming with pressure. John John Wilson hits him from behind. Maggot fumbles, and we get it in good field position. Well, we're going to be nice to him and turn right back around and give it to him again. A, we make a nice run here, but you just got to squeeze that ball, particularly against good defensive football teams are going to be snatching and grabbing at it, but it's, uh, you just got to control it. So Kentucky's back on, and there's Ricky Sutton, and man, it's good to see Ricky back out there. He's missed a couple of weeks back early in the season, and he is again. He's getting in on another tackle with Quentin Riggins, and you know, you see a lot of folks. There's Walter Tate and Larry Young and Richard Shea, and <coughs> there's Quentin Riggins again. We just, we just got to try to keep improving defense. Uh, Fernando Horn making a big play. And they have to uh, punt. Here's the start of a, the, the winning drive. I'm going to call this a, uh, just one of those old-fashioned blood and guts drives with those two running backs. There's James running one side and Stacy running the other. And Reggie comes up with a couple of big plays. The offensive line coming off the football great. Second effort right there on the part of Teapot Brown in Dothan, Alabama.
He probably, they got a little penetration on that play. And again, you can see James and and Stacy that uh, we kind of was a great play right here on the part of Reggie. And and I'm, I th I really think that uh, Reggie had a lot to do with this drive before they ever went on the field. There's a nice run right here by James Joseph to get the ball down inside the four-yard line. This this drive was 15 plays, I believe. Right. Uh, 15 plays. Still in 83 and, uh, yards. James Six. takes the ball down to the to the one Ooh. foot line, a one-yard line, and Stacy Danny takes it over from there. Gets an excellent block from from James and <coughs> Bob Meeks and Rob Selby and. Victor Hall, all on that side over there. He just walked in the end zone untouched. Kentucky comes back. They don't quit. They're still in the ball game. He's going to see another one of those tip balls, and they come up with it. Could have been an interception for us. Dennis Wallace makes a tackle. <coughs> As throwing to, they, they got a bunch of good receivers at Kentucky. They all look the same to me. I believe that was Logan. Dennis Wallace makes the play. There's John Wiley and Larry Young and I believe D'Amico Anderson on the on the tackle. There's a fine hit by Alex Thomas. Now a lot of our folks yesterday might have seen this play on the and may get upset about it, but they had the tight end and the flank of both lined up on the line of scrimmage and an unbalanced line and both of them came off and that is illegal. They got, uh, but the official didn't see it, and I cannot kind of understand that. It just, it, I don't think Kentucky meant to do it either. I think it was a mistake on the player's part, and it just one of those things that the officials didn't catch. And then Craig Ogletree makes a big play on the two-point conversion. <coughs> right, and Kentucky onside kicks it and doesn't quite get it uh, 10 yards. Again, we, we are... We're looking more like Auburn's supposed to look right here at this particular part of the ball game from about the end of the line. third quarter on. And but the the backs, a second effort and, and running and twisting and turning and and just doing what they've got to do to keep the ball chains moving. And when Lyle comes in and kicks the field goal, makes it 24 to 12. And Kentucky throws one last interception where it bounces off of that guy, and we catch one of those tips, <laughs> and Darrell Crawford makes the interception, and and uh, we run the clock out. Darrell had a block, uh, extra point, an interception, and a tip ball for an interception yesterday. That's three big I plays I know he had. I can't remember a game as many big third down plays that Auburn converted. It, it was <coughs> well, well, you know, we went into the game as one of probably the biggest concerns that I've had is the fact that we've been so poor in third down conversions. And yesterday we were 10 out of 16, which is not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than we've, than we've been. Okay, the road is rough ahead, and we'll talk about that when we return. Amazing. Which uh, some of the Kentucky players said Auburn's players seemed mad on the field yesterday in view of what happened last night down in Baton Rouge. I guess LSU is really going to be mad. Well, it's uh, it's going to be a it should be a great football game, and LSU is along with Auburn was picked to win the conference. But what I see around this conference right now, anybody could win it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I I just look at our schedule and and. I watched the Tennessee Georgia game last night and listened to the Florida LSU game and and uh, it's just uh, anybody can beat anybody else on a given day and it's one of those things where uh, you just got the the team that's ready to play every week and, and, and prepared and prepared and and can stay healthy. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have a lot to do with it. Uh, LSU has a, the most experienced quarterback in the league. He's played more games than anybody. Well, you know, I think that. Uh, the the league though right now to me the defenses in this league are, are, are dominating it maybe except for Tennessee where their offense is you know is controlling the football but uh, you take Alabama Georgia <coughs> I think we're probably as balanced as anybody with the offense and defense Florida's defense and LSU's defense is, is playing well too mm -hmm. so Kentucky's defense. We don't know for sure, but we feel virtually sure that the game will be on TBS, which would mean an early start. We'll know later in the day. Well, it would suit me fine. Start at 12 o'clock. Your team, Coach, uh, <coughs> made some progress this week. 
you just I think said all made, I think we made a lot of progress. I think we made progress not only uh, as far as the football is concerned, but I think we grew up a little bit, and, and uh, we, we played a lot of people, and, and we're going to continue to play those people, and, and we're going to have to pay the price for playing young folks. And, and, but we won't get better as the year goes along if we don't play them, and, and uh, they also help keep the, you know, the older guys fresh and rested. And, Which so was a big factor we, yesterday. Uh, yeah, and, but if you don't play them early, you won't play them. In other words, you've got to play them from the beginning. Or you wait till the game is in the fourth quarter, and then you're going to put the, keep the best you got out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Auburn next week against LSU in a big Southeastern Conference game, and we'll have the replay of it with Coach Pat Dye on Sunday. Join us then. Thank you for watching today. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks. proud of you and and uh, the leadership and the things that, that you that you got to have to to be a champion <clears throat> just played them out there today but not only that man you got to, you're gonna have a lot of other opportunities to display what you just played today we won what 10 to 6 it don't really make any difference they won last year 76 and it's the biggest win they had all year long this may be big may, this may be the biggest win we have all year long the score makes no difference the fact is you fought, a, you fought a hungry football team tooth and toenail all day long and you came out on top. Just, you couldn't write the script any better. You played a win and control the fourth quarter. I think you did a great job of that. In a game reminiscent of the leather helmet days, Auburn beat LSU 10 to 6 yesterday. 85,000 fans saw it at Jordan Hare Stadium and a national television audience, and they saw a happy coach at the end, coach. Well, in a, in a day of run and shoot and spreading people out all over the field and scoring 50 points or 60 points or whatever, uh, the last this year and of course last year both uh, with LSU have resorted back to the game being played <coughs> on the front lines and in the trenches and and just the stout of heart and um, it was a great win for our football team and you look at the statistics on yesterday's game and it's uh, it's not 20 yards difference on on our part last year and in, in, in other words I think they gained a little over 200 yards last year they had 227 yesterday we had a little over 300 last year, and I think we had 305 or something last year, uh, yesterday, and it was a, it was a great win for us, and, and uh, uh, we turned it over twice. They didn't turn it over any, which I think uh, made a difference in the, in, in the game, in the closeness of the game. Uh, the thing that we did yesterday that we didn't do last year is that we only got one penalty yesterday, um, where last year we got several penalties, and, and uh, and hurt us at critical times, and, and it was a it was a hard fought game. Uh, intensity on both sides of the ball, and and um, the one that that uh, a young football ne team needs to play. And I saw a lot of young players yesterday make plays in key situations that hadn't done it before, and it's got to be a, a tremendous growing up experience for them. Very encouraging. Now let's go in the dressing room, and we begin our conversations with the players with Shane Wasden, who made that key punt return in the fourth quarter. The middle return on and uh, uh, first you know he, he kicked it so far he kind of he out kicked his coverage and uh, uh, so I, you know I had some great blocking and all I had to do was uh, find the crease and, uh, and hit it. Think you might score? I was hoping I would uh, I, you know when I broke through I, it was, there were two guys I had to beat 
and uh, one of kind of fast too. Right? Yes, <laughs> I, I tried out running to the sideline, but uh, couldn't do that, so I, I tried to cut back on them, and then somebody caught me from behind. Was that uh, Washington punt return a tonic? Oh, <laughs> exciting! Very oh, exciting! Well, I'm, I'm glad, glad I was on it. On it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys get your blocks? Oh yeah, yeah I got I made mine two. and somebody else. Yeah, you wouldn't if you didn't. You wouldn't say it. No. <laughs> well, I knew we had to get the first down or touchdown. I wish we would have got the touchdown. Uh, I thought I got in, but they said I, my foot hit out of bounds first. But uh, Coach always saying, you don't never know when your time's come for you to step up. So it was time for me, and I just took advantage of it. Well, I had the option to run or, or pass. Uh, the first one I threw it, and the second one I came back and, and run it. So, you know, it's a pretty good play for us. You're down in the fourth quarter with, uh, with six minutes to go, and uh, you come back and you win one. It, it just gives you that confidence to be able to know that when you get in that situation again, you've done it before, so you draw on that experience, and especially to make the plays that, that we make. What does this do for the confidence of the offensive unit to come on and stick it in when they're behind with six minutes to go? Oh, it helps. It helps a lot. I, I never, uh, the, all offensive line, we never gave a doubt that uh, we were gonna win the game. Man, we just went out there and played that way. Yeah, we had to put pressure on him because we know he was a good quarterback. We wasn't putting pressure on him. He would complete the passes. And some early part of the third quarter, we weren't putting pressure. So we realized what we had to do. And we did the job, I believe. I think um, it started out being like you said, a basic football game. Um, offense rumble a little bit, then the offense rumble a little bit. And um, I think, like you said, it came out down to the fourth quarter. And I think um, that really excited the defense. Um, it reminded us kind of last year. But this time we just came out on the upper hand. You take this to Tallahassee? Oh, very much so. I think um, I think this game was a game that the defense really just came together. I think we discovered something that we're going to have to keep, and I think this is what we're going to have to take to Tallahassee. Mild, 85,000. Great day for football. It was uh, a game that, uh, that you know, that, that I was, I've been looking forward to and our players have been looking forward to. And, uh, you know, the occasion uh, is... The bigness of the game, playing for your home track. Started off right here running straight at uh, LSU, and we knew we had to do that. And uh, our offensive staff did a great job with the game plan. And, <clears throat> of course, the offensive players carried it out. The offensive line, I'm sure that I haven't talked to Coach Callaway, but I know that with the movement that we got, had to come off the football and block better. And James Joseph and Stacy Danley gave us great running inside all day long. <coughs> And they caught five passes. Too. Well, we went into the game. They gave that up last year, and, of course, we picked it up off the film from last year, and, and that play right there helped us, our power play out of the wishbone set. And that was third and one there. We converted 13 out of 20 third down situations yesterday. It was big in the game, and, of course, there again, you can see James and Stacy running the sweep. We ran inside and outside and against a good LSU defensive football team. And... Uh, they are, they are well coached, good fundamental football team. We have a, what is this, a 15-play drive to open the game or something. Right. And, and uh, kick a field goal. Chris did a good job on the hole, Coach. Yeah, uh, Chris Dickerson, his little snap was a little high, and he got it down, great job. <coughs> Those, that the great hit right there, and I believe the biggest improvement overall that I saw yesterday was the tackling of our secondary and being physical. John Wiley had some great hits, and... and uh, I saw uh, Eric Ramsey have a great hit. And <coughs> big play right here by Lamar Rogers. Get them down inside. The, they get down inside of our 10-yard line and come up with big play. Several of them to, this is another one by Corey Barlow right here. They run the draw, and, and uh, we stop them, and they got to kick a field goal. This is, that was the first quarter. Each team <coughs> has only had one possession, and LSU is still in there. Good Bears. pressure right here by Fernando Horn. He gets the sack, almost got his clubbed that ball away from Fernando, had two big sacks yesterday. <coughs> and um, they get a field goal out of it, but that's better than getting, letting them get in the end zone. Uh, I think that, it, again, it was by far the best that our defense has played all year long, and you could sense the oneness and togetherness and playing together. And, and uh, the big plays in the ball game, uh, as Reggie throwing to, to Stacy again, James Joseph, you can see wow. the yards he makes out the contact, the offensive line coming off the ball. There's Chris Gray and Jeff Catullo and Ed King and Bob Meeks. John Hudson. <coughs> Mark Rose and Brad Johnson and, and uh, Rob Selby. Third and three here. The, uh, all of them doing well in the offensive line and... Uh, Victor Hall had some big plays. Again, you can see just 
there's not we taking advantage of every little crack we can get in and here's a turnover that stops the drive and we just uh, you know that that no question that that hurt right there but the guy that fumbled it would be the last one on the team that would want to fumble it. That's a great play by Larry Young. Larry had some big plays yesterday. <coughs> Walter Tate, we started Walter yesterday. Uh, Richard Shea had a broken hand, and, and Rich, as Richard playing right there, I believe Richard broke his other hand yesterday, and uh, Richard, of course, has been our starter. There's David Rocker and, and Craig Ogletree, and <clears throat> Seemed like the ball got on the ground with them a couple of times yesterday and we couldn't come up with it. Big play by Elson Billingsley. Jumps up and knocks the ball down. Key third down play. Third and 14 right here. Uh, they run the draw. There's Quentin and Darrell and Lamar Rogers and Craig Ogletree and John Wiley and gang tackling all day long yesterday. They mishandled the snap and pressure on him and, and Craig Ogletree and Corey Barlow and, and Elton Billingsley and Eric Ramsey and <coughs> all of them around the football. We have a chance here and and uh, Fredy hits uh, Little Dale Overton. Uh, our wide receivers had some big plays yesterday. That was a big one by Dale and of course Shane Washington, the punt return, but uh, looking at the playback, they had some key blocks and running situations and uh, we didn't get the ball thrown downfield as much as we'd like to, but uh, they certainly did their part in the running game, and that's what's important. Halftime 3-3. We'll return in just a moment. Part of the 85,000 at Auburn yesterday was a group from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They pick out a game somewhere in the country in October that they want to see, and they wanted to come and see a Southeastern Conference game. They drove 15 hours to get here, and uh, Mike Hubbard talked to the leader of the Lancaster gang. Uh, good hospitality. Uh, the one thing we like best about this is the, w the way they go crazy about their football down here. It, it's just, uh, we're all college football fans, and that's, that's why we come to the Southeast Conference and make sure it's a conference game. Great hospitality. Yep, great hospitality. Okay, if you can introduce everybody, that'll be great. Okay, this is John Curtin, Pete Horn, Bob Donovan, Phil Simpson, Tom Cambick, Bruce Emswaller. And we want to mention one guy, John McFadden, who unfortunately, because of a death in the family, had to back out of the trip at the last minute. And, of course, this program's on satellite, so I guess those guys got to see them. Well, I got a chance to, to meet all of them yesterday after the ball game, and they were excited about the game and excited about being at Auburn and um, had a lot of fun. I'd like to mention our coaching staff. They're doing a great job with our, you know, with our kids. I'm particularly proud for Coach Davis, especially the team's coach. And the kicking game played such an uh, important part in the game yesterday, and our defense <coughs> staff, Joe Witt, and Steve Dennis and Reggie Heron and Wayne Hall uh, had done a great job with the defense and getting them to, you know, come along and, and playing together. And, and uh, offensively, uh, Larry Blakeney and, and Pat Sullivan and Neil Calloway and Bud Casey and James Daniels, all uh, that kid, James, the tight ends are young and playing good. Our offensive line came off the ball well yesterday. And James and Stacy and the running backs and, and uh, Pat and, and Larry had two or three critical calls in the game yesterday where they came up with the right play at the right time to, to make it happen. Okay, we'll return with that momentous second half in just a moment. Well, I tell you what, right now when I'm playing ball, um, and there's a ton of people in the stands yelling, yelling, and then you'll hear somebody say, War Eagle, or... I'm from Auburn, and that catches my uh, uh, attention right there. I turn and look, and I wave, and um, it's nice to know that people, um, whenever they leave Auburn or wherever they go, they still carry that Auburn spirit with them. With the action, Moss has just made a big punt return, and LSU is at midfield or thereabouts. Fine play by Larry Young, and there's Wayne Bowsman, and Steve Brown, and John Wilson, and pressure again by... Fernando Horn and Steve's back there, and there's John and, and uh, Richard Shea. Playing together, that's the name of the game. Great block right there by Rob Feather. Great block by Chris Gray. Good, tough running by Stacy. About a 10 or 12-yard gain, 15 or something like that. And third and six. Key play right there by 
uh, good blocking by Ed King and <coughs> Bob Meeks and at, at the point of attack and another, you could just, Stacy pulling people and pulling people and. Third and one, third and three, excuse me. <coughs> another key pass to, to Stacy and make the first down. Another third down play for the first. <coughs> Running the corners on third down this week. Well, we had success with it yesterday, which means that our tight ends did a good job and had good blocking on the corner, good protection for... <coughs> Ready, that linebacker makes a great play on the, on the interception and uh, stops us down. We went kind of in scoring position. As again, you can see our defense. Great thing yesterday that our defense came comes back and rises to the occasion and stops them and... This is a critical <coughs> key, possession here. Key play right there by LSU. That's a third down conversion. You can see the defense together, getting together on the field, playing together. Fourth quarter now. Not caring who gets the credit, just as long as it's got a blue jersey on. That's good pressure by Craig Ogletree and, and Larry Young. Gets him face jaw to jaw, and there's David Rocker having fun. And it's... it's uh, they come and they kick the field goal, and that's uh, that is the starting of the fourth quarter, and we're behind six to three, and uh, it doesn't get any easier. We're still working, still working, and there's Reggie back to throw and throws to Victor Hall, and and uh, Tennessee want to get impatient in a situation <coughs> right, like this. We come back and make another key first down. Stacy running hard. And <coughs> Good block by Teapot Brown and James Joseph. And that was third and nine. They all short. That's right. We ran a draw, and some of our fans didn't like it, but that's understandable. <laughs> We'd made the first down three or four times on the draw, and at, at that point in time, you know, we had plenty of time, didn't want to turn the ball over. And th this is a critical series right here. Third and two coming. Big play here. <laughs> and Derek, uh, Darrell Crawford makes this play. There's Elton Billingsley and, and uh, who all is there? There's Dennis Wallace and Walter Tate and gang of his buddies around, and, but it was third and two and Mustafa and here's the punt return and set up a touchdown. 33-yard return. I went to Coach Davis on the sideline and, and uh, he said that Shane wanted to run it back up the middle and it wouldn't have been my choice, but it was his, and that's what he did, and it broke it, and it made it happen, and, and gave us great field position. And, and we take it in from here. And of course, every yard, every down, every snap critical now. Second down, down and that four here. Game, it takes, you can't believe the, 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 the pause and composure and confidence and the, the things that it takes to, to, to play in a game of this nature. And, <coughs> Just played all those things. Getting stronger and getting better. Good block by Alexander downfield there. And you call timeout. Good, time hole, out good on hole inside right there by Ed King and Brad Johnson and John Hudson and Rob Selby. Bob Meeks to get it down close. <coughs> Victor Hall, Reggie. Reggie has the option to run a throw. Great block right there by Ed King, Teapot Brown. James Joseph, Victor Hall, Rob Seven, Bob Meeks, and the whole left side of the line. And uh, they got a little penetration, and, and Ed King picked it up and got it in the end zone. And a very Win, Win Lyle kicks the extra point, and uh, we go ahead 10 to, 10 to 6, and the extra point was big, and there's Quentin Riggins. And now it's time to play defense. <laughs> They're getting together on the sideline. They, you know, this is, you just need these kind of games, and you need to need to have been there and win them. And, and uh, as Darrell Crawford, and uh, you know, you can just sense them growing up and getting more confident. And great lick right here by John Wiley, and we really haven't had a had a lick hit like that in the secondary this year. And you know, once they find out they can do it, then you're getting that pressure around Hodson. He gets a little, little. Quick with the ball. There's good pressure by Tim Cromarty, and and I believe Darrell Crawford comes in and makes a sack. And, and there's David Rocker and Larry Young and, and uh, 
Fernando Horn back there, and it was just a big, big play. Here's a key third and eight play. <clears throat> we call it again with the option to, to run a throw, and here Reggie chose to run the football. He saw he could make the first down. He made about 25 yards on the play, stayed inbounds, run the clock, and, and uh, we make one more first down here. This key play right there with Stacy. Again, the play calling and <coughs> running out the clock here with, with uh, Coach Blakeney and Neil Calloway and, and Coach Sullivan is critical because making first downs here is just as important as scoring. I'd like to say that Coach Archer and his team staff and, and the ball club was well prepared. They fought hard throughout the whole ball game, and, and it's one of those things where they probably feel just like we did last year. We'll be back. Listen, Kelly's car are both insured by Alpha. When we switch to Alpha, we got better coverage for less money. I like saving money. The Hopkins family is celebrating six years of accident-free driving. Switch to Alpha and you'll save. Stay with Alpha, you'll save even more. Up to 10% more. Switch to Alpha. For your home and your car. Next week, Auburn at Florida State. It's a 640 kick on ESPN, and we'll see you Sunday. Thank you. Coach Downs of Hicks. I was mighty proud of our football team for not folding and, and giving up at the half, coming back and fighting and, and scratching and staying in the ball game. I was proud of our offense for, for, for taking the ball and, and scoring at the end and then coming back at the end and having a chance to get the tie. And I think they showed a lot of class and a, and a, and a lot of courage and a lot of the right kind of things. It's a hard-fought football game on both sides of the ball. And uh, I know that our kids wanted to win mighty bad. And, and played as, you know, I can't, I can't fault the effort. Uh, Florida State was well prepared, as they always are. Coach Bowden and his staff uh, have done a great job. And I think they got an outstanding football team. Saturday night in Tallahassee, the Auburn rally fell short. Uh, Tigers... Uh, what was the score? Florida State 22, Auburn 14. Not a good trip to Florida, Coach. Well, it was a it was a game that uh, you know we wanted to win mighty bad, and it it was one that uh, that uh, you know I think our players played hard. It uh, was hard fought on both sides of the football, uh, uh, offensive and defensive on both sides. Uh, Florida State's got a fine football team, and they're playing extremely well right now. Uh, we still trying to. We're still trying to build a football team. I think that uh, I think we'll be a better football team for having played that game last night. I don't think that uh, it certainly wasn't what we wanted. Uh, I was very disappointed in in some aspects of the game, uh, particularly the, our production offensively from the first drive that we uh, second drive maybe that we took down and got the field goal until actually the fourth quarter or the end of the third quarter we started driving and. Um, it's like uh, everything in between. We were, you know, we weren't uh, we weren't consistent. We weren't we didn't look like a football team. Somebody would break down here. Somebody would break down there. They got uh, they sacked Reggie six times in the first half, and I don't believe they sacked him in the second half. And and it's and it's hard to understand why that something like that would happen. Uh, but. Uh, uh, our football team showed all of the right signs, all of, as far as the, the character and the and the not giving up, and um, you know, from a from a defensive standpoint, uh, we we kept our defense pressure on them all night long with a poor kicking game and and uh, poor production offensively, and uh, they hung in there and gave us a chance to win the football game late, or at least tie the game late. Let's go into the dressing room now and get some uh, post-game comments from the players. I think we have a good football team. Uh, I don't know if we found out what it takes to get us ready to play every week. I mean, and I'm, I'm talking offensively. Uh, defensively, I thought they played, gave us every opportunity to, to have an opportunity to win at the end. A better opportunity than we had. And, uh, like I say, I don't know. I think until we we come together as an offensive unit come together as as a team then you know we're not gonna we're not gonna do too well on offense we're not gonna score the points that we're capable of scoring there were some crucial areas i think we could um 
to stop the drive to cut, uh, earlier so that um, that the um, offense could have a little more time to score, but um, unfortunately it didn't work out that way. Defensively, we waited too late to get the turnover for our offense, so we put them in a predicament of a minute 15 left in the game, I think on, on the 20. And so we got to go back. We still got Bill because we stayed in the game and we fought and we scratched, and uh, we must be doing something right. I believe we are. We got to get an attitude that when we get the ball inside the 20, we're going to score. Uh, right now, I don't think we have that attitude. Oh, no, most definitely not. You know, I just want those guys to come together over there, you know, and, you know, we got to come together more as a team also. So it's not a grudge or anything, like I said. It's our job to give them the ball. No matter what situation they put us in, we have to respond accordingly and try to come out in the best situation that we can and just give it back to them let them do something else with it. Oh, when folks on hand, they Good. were in the end zone. Phil, I tell you I, you, you, I hadn't seen the interviews with the players just a minute ago when you showed them in the film, but you get those kind of remarks after a heartbreaking gut-wrenching loss like that last night uh, you got to feel good about them as people and and the things that you're trying to instill in them as players and and uh you know i hope that uh i know i i, I deserve all of the blame and all the criticism not those kids because they you can you watch a ball game and they're they're playing hard and they and they we just uh we i haven't done the job of getting it to 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 come together as a as a total team and uh, and, it, and it's not because we're not working at it. It's not because we don't we don't realize that that, that uh, we're not. <clears throat> but you take this drive right here, and we take it right down the field and score against a fine Florida State defensive football team. They weren't too good early in the year, but they're playing extremely well right now. There's a third down seven now. As uh, Reggie hitting Victor Hall down to the five yard line. We have a you know they, we were down on the end of the field here and. And uh, Stacy makes a fine run down to the one foot line. We're gonna get it in the end zone. And we in the noise is, is severe and, and and we get the all sides penalty right there. They kept us out of the end zone. Well, I mean, you know, that's that uh, those two guys right there play as hard as anybody we got and, and uh they don't wanna jump all sides, but I mean it, it the noise is there and it's just one of those things that happens and and uh, you try to be as disciplined as you can and, but it's still gonna happen. It happens in the in you know, everywhere. So um, defensively, we we are, I think, continue to make some progress. That little kid that did a great job for him last night, too, in Memphis. Uh, Carter, their they, uh, little tailback that was hurt, but there's not much difference in them. Amp Lee is a freshman, and we got to look at him for three more years. But our kids getting around him and getting after him, there's Fernando Horn and and Frank Stankunas and, and uh, Tim Cromartie, and there's Quentin Riggins, and, Tim Cromartie there again with, with uh, David Rocker, and, and uh, David made a lot of plays last night. They kicked a the field goal, and it's tied 3-3. Three to three. And Right here is where we, where we kind of, uh, we, didn't, we didn't move the ball, and, and uh, we just, we didn't execute here, and uh, we had a poor kick, and it got us in full field position, and, and uh, it was just one of those things where Offensively, we didn't we didn't consume any time on the clock. We didn't make any first downs, and just kept us in full field position. And every time they got the ball, they, you know, they they were in nearly in scoring range. Here's the kick right here. We get a good roll off of this one, and they get it still at the 35 yard line. We just never we never never got field position and kept it. And fine play right there by Lamar Rogers and. Quentin Riggins and here he comes again too. Another fine play by Lamar. Lamar playing hurt last night. He he actually strained his knee in practice on Wednesday, and and uh, we were afraid that Coach Waldrop and Lamar worked awful hard to great throw and catch on the part of Florida State right there. Uh, Peter Tom with us is an outstanding quarterback, probably as accurate as anybody we've seen. This is the same drive, second quarter now. I think they take this one, take this one on in. Mm -hmm. This is a draw play down to the one foot line, and they're going to knock this one in from from there. And uh, they go out front ten to ten to three, which is not, you know, there's nothing to panic about there. That's for sure. So it was the first time we, we we knew we could move the football. It's just a matter of you know of doing it. I was particularly proud of our football team, I and mean, we get sacked two or three times right here. But, but uh, 
you know, just we got to we got to stand up. Our protection's got to stand up when we're trying to throw the ball. We get a full kick out here, kick the ball out of uh, bounds at about the goes out about the 35 yard line. Defense does a good job of holding, and then they convert a couple of third down plays that, that put us in and uh, kept the drive alive for them, and they could take it in from four. And we're still, you know, with four seventeen to three, and they missed the point here, right? And and that that uh, that was going to be big in the ball game. Mm -hmm. Come back and Bridger makes a nice throwing catch with Alexander. And uh, again, that's a pressure, and we turn it over and put our defense in the hole again. They come in and do a great job of holding them here to a field goal. And uh, of course, we're going in half. It's 19 to three. As you can see, we're getting out there. There's David Rocker and, and uh, Dennis Wallace back there, and Walter Tate. And, they're getting around the football. So they kick the field goal, the 37-yard field goal, and it is Florida State 19, Auburn 3. I'll tell you what, right now when I'm playing ball, uh, and there's a ton of people in the stands yelling, yelling, and then you'll hear somebody say, War Eagle, or I'm from Auburn, and that catches my uh, uh, attention right there. I turn and look and I wave, and um, it's nice to know that people, um, whenever they leave Auburn or wherever they go, they still carry that Auburn team with them. People who believe in teamwork. Let me tell you about the possession of the second half to Florida State. Well, we come back out, and uh, we, the first thing you got to do is to, to, to stop them, and, and we stop them as uh, Walter Tate making a big play on the inside running game there. I see the Tom Willis and great interception by Elton Billingsley. Gave us the ball out at midfield, and we could have just, I mean, you know, if we could have taken this ball right here and moved it and throw the quick screen a little slow and we don't handle it, and, and we end up uh, not making first down here, and they. They got a lot of pressure on Reggie all night, and, and um, that's not uh, conducive to having a good day throwing the football. Richie Neal came in and, and did our punting after the first quarter, and a little guy right there is very dangerous. I thought our specialty teams last night did a great job covering kicks and, and uh, the play our kicking, and of course, Wynn Lyle is quietly having a great year kicking field goals for us. There's David Rocker making a fine play. This is the third. There's Fernando Horn and Walter Tate. And we're getting we're getting better defensively. And that Greg Ogletree had, Greg had some big plays last night. Caused a fumble at the end of the ball game, and and uh, they get a get a field goal, and that's the end of the score for Florida State. And more well, where we score 11 points in the fourth quarter. And, that was a big run right there by Stacy Danley. That was the third we're still, in the, we're still in the third quarter now. Big, big play. There's James Joseph, you're gonna see our back running extremely hard right here, and they got a little running room. And third down three. Uh, no, not this play, but the next. The uh, and Stacy running. It's a basic isolation play right here. You, he does a nice job hitting James Joseph. And James breaks the tackle right there, and he's down the sideline. Good blocking out front right there by Pedro Cherry. There's two youngsters right there going to be fine football players for Auburn, Pedro Cherry and, and uh, Herbert Casey. Both of them are young, and, and they're working every week. And, and, you know, I just... First and goal at the nine, fourth quarter now. Same drive. This is... Uh, bootleg play that we hit Victor Hall down early on and, and that guy breaks on and intercepts it out of bounds. Have a drop ball here and we kick a field goal. Third and goal right here and then we'll try a little screen pass and 
Florida State has got tremendous team defense. And uh, I was particularly proud of our kids last night. There was a lot of a lot of times when I'm sure that. Uh, Here comes another big turnover. Uh, fine interception right there by Frankie Stantunas. 10.50 left now on that turnover. Comes the Auburn drive for the touchdown. A couple of nice passes. Reggie hits uh, Dale Overton right there, and, and Dale makes two or three catches on this drive. They're just really fine plays. Stacy Danley running the toss sweep. Now much, it's fourth and seven. Not much running room there. They get a they get a late hit on Reggie here on a out of bounds play. They come with a blitz. They got hits him right there, and then we get a 15 yard chunk and keeps the drive alive for us. At the Florida 26 now. Reggie hits Dale Olson again down to the four. Stacy takes it to the one down the two yard line, I guess. And mm -hmm. then James Joseph runs it in on a great run. He sure does. He got a guy in the backfield unblocked, untouched, right there. And that kid's a great football player, too. Butler. Going for two now, because you need to. He gets it in the end zone. Two Reggie, eights will tie. Reggie ro rolls out and hits uh, Stacy Danley, and we were in tying range anyway. And it was about five minutes to go in the game or something. And and uh, they have a long back, drive. They have well, they have a drive. It uh, it's a it's a long drive, but it doesn't. It you know it, it left they left a little time on the mm -hmm. clock. There's a David Rocker and Daryl Crawford. They fake the reverse. A little old freshman right there is going to be a fine player for them. There's Fantunas and Rocker again. Looks like David made a lot of plays last night. Sweet, Corey Barlow, Quentin Riggins. Quentin's always around the ball. If it, if it has a fumble right there caused by Craig Ogletree and somebody else trying to get on it. There's Lamar Rogers, Walter Tate, and Quentin Riggins. New life. Eric Ramsey came up with a fine play right here on the on the little slip screen. We get a clipping call on it. Reggie comes back on a on a scramble and makes a first down and then some. Under a minute left after this play. Nice little clever little move right there. And just puts his head down and runs over one right there. Thirty-eight seconds to go. Here's a fine throw and catch right here, and a great block by James Joseph. Watch this block right here. He gets mm, two. three of them, two of them, or whatever. And Greg Taylor stays in bounds and takes it down to what? The 34 yard line. 12 seconds left. 12 seconds left. Reggie hits Little Dale Overton again. Six right seconds. On the boundary. Left. Six seconds. He said he's. He saw the goal line, yeah, he could, could score. Well, he, he probably would have scored if the guy hadn't caught him from behind. But it was a great football game and, and one that we fell short and Florida State did what they had to do to win. And I think Florida State's got a got a fine football team and they're playing extremely well right now. And um, we haven't put all the pieces together to our football team. And, and uh, I know that I'm going to have a lot of experts telling me what I need to do and what I don't need to do. I'm, I'm well aware that there's a lot that needs to be done, and and uh, you know we're gonna try to. I don't I don't think if anybody knows our players any better than I do, and we're gonna try to get them to get them playing together a little more, a little more consistency, and I think we'll continue to improve. We'll be back in just a minute. It's the right color.
kicking game was out of this world. Out of this world. <laughs> Look at it, Papa. Uh, and no turnovers! Defensively, we, 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 to be honest, we're a lot further along than I would ever dream we'd be right now. And looks like getting better. Our kicking game came today. Offensively, we just, we need to, we need to feel good about this game because it wasn't easy and it wasn't pretty. <clears throat> but let me tell you something. You didn't turn the football over and you took it from two drives the second half and put the ball in the end zone. And the, one, and the way we did it, it wasn't a one and two man show. It was everybody, all 11 of us were doing it. Auburn's 63rd homecoming. Pat Dye's ninth win without a loss on homecoming day. Took a little while, Coach, but it was a fine win nevertheless. It was uh, one that uh, we needed, and we needed to win it just exactly like we won it. And we didn't need for it to be easy. Um, it was a, a game that Mississippi State, first of all, has got a fine defensive football team. Mm -hmm. And uh, they gave us everything that we wanted yesterday and, and then some. <clears throat> we've been struggling so offensively that uh, we went back and really cut down on what we were trying to do and simplified and went into the ball game with intentions of going back and establishing the fact that we would run it. And we would be a physical, hard-nosed football team. And I believe that... Uh, and I believe we got that done yesterday. Now, if we can build around what we got accomplished yesterday and go on and try to develop some confidence in our passing game, I think that we're going to be on track. No turnovers, kicking game improved 100%. Really terrific, yeah. And uh, just a, a good day for football. Let's go in the dressing room now and meet some of those young men who played so well. We knew coming in, they felt like they had said to several of their players in interviews all week. They, they could control the ball on us, and, and we felt like we were a good defense and they couldn't control the ball on us. And so we went out and proved them wrong and we came up with a solid win today. Were you inbound? What, why did he call you out of bounds on an interception? Uh, I guess it was so pretty. I, uh, I, don't, I don't think I was out of bounds. I, I thought it was inbounds. I thought it was inbounds. What did he say? Ball. You juggle a ball or something? He said I stepped out of bounds for one speed. I thought I was in. I mean, it was a, it was a good catch. Case. Uh -huh. You played your case, but he wasn't, he wasn't right. He wouldn't give in, but I thought it was a pretty coverage. I had him covered like a blanket. Did you see where the football went when you hit that guy? No, I didn't. Where did he go? It almost went in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just I just try to make contact the best I can, the best I could. You, you know you hit the ball? Obviously you hit it because yeah. it, it was launched. Uh, I, was, I know I had hit the ball. I know I had gave him a good shot. I was just hoping he, that he didn't catch the ball. Some of the guys got hurt on the punt team, and uh, the coach just notified me uh, like later into the week uh, that I, that he would put me on the specialty teams, and I was just you know glad to go in there and do you know do whatever you I can do. Found yourself in on a couple found of myself at home, yes sir. Is this uh, shutout something you need to kind of spring you into Florida? Yes, I believe we needed this. Prove that we still a hard no defensive team, what I believe we are. Had a couple of plays today. It's starting to come, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to improve, you know. Trying to build up my company. It's get making ready. more sense now. Isn't it? Yeah, you know I'm trying to get ready for Florida and all the hard teams we got to play, like Alabama. I believe this game helped my confidence some, and I'll be ready. Came at halftime. We all got together, you know, and we tried to build spirits up in everybody. And we went out there. They had two good drives, you know, put the ball in the end zone, in the end zone and helped us out. Felt pretty good going in the game, knowing it was my duty and my responsibility, and not being the second string guy. It helps a lot knowing it's you're the first-string guy to, to come in there and do the job. I did pretty good, I think, as for the first time. We kept we came to the game. We wanted to run the ball and establish some physical, hard nose running attack. I think we got that accomplished. How long has it been since you carried the ball 35 times? 35 times. <laughs> Ooh, uh, it's been a while, uh, but I prepare myself each week in practice, so I didn't ever fatigue wasn't a factor. You were never exhausted. Never. 84,000-plus on homecoming at Auburn. Well, it was a beautiful day for football, and, and just uh, the crowd and the, the, the setting couldn't be any better. And, um, you know, a lot of times there's distractions on homecoming, and, and uh, the kids got social activities planned, and, you know, the football is just a part of it. Great play right here by Dennis Wallace. Looked like Dennis made some big plays on the kicking game yesterday. And Richard Nail, a true walk-on, they did the punting. That ball was tipped and looked like to me that, you know, one of these things, when that ball starts bouncing the wrong way, it, you get worried about it, but we come back and make it bounce our way. 
As David Rockett, David looked like he had another big day at defensive tackle. And, of course, Craig Oglesby played a great football game. Quinn Riggins. <coughs> Could have centered him up there. All of his buddies. Uh, Quentin's been taking a lot of ribbon this past week because he had some missed tackles last week against Florida State. And <laughs> <coughs> Coach Heron has put in some new drills to help him. As Stacy running, and I think that's where Stacy got hurt right there. He made a nice seven-yard run, picked up a first down. <coughs> As Reggie throwing to Pedro Cherry, picked up four or five yards. Running for third and one here. <coughs> We didn't, we didn't have many long runs yesterday, just a lot of four and five, six, eight yard runs and some twos and no gainers mixed in there with it. But <clears throat> Darrell Williams, Lectron, uh, played, I think, ran the ball 10 times yesterday and that, that experience is gonna be good for him. But there's a guy right there that made it happen for us yesterday and all of his buddies, he didn't do it by himself, but he certainly, I think, was the one that, that uh, set the thing in motion because he gave such great effort in the first half and and, and made some big runs on his own and <coughs> broke tackles and just uh, was playing at that level that you got to play at. Here's another outstanding play by Dennis Wallace. And another outstanding punt by Ricky right, Hill. The, uh, the kicking game yesterday was by far the best we've had all year long without question. You know, Elton Billingsley and Quentin and Darrell and David and Lamar Rogers and Fernando Horn and as Craig Ogletree, Craig had two sacks in a row yesterday at one point in the game and comes up with a big play right there. Had a block pass. <coughs> <coughs> to me, right now, and we've seen all of them, I haven't seen the kid from Florida, but uh, Craig Ogletree is playing as good as any outside linebacker in the league and, and in my opinion is the best one in the league as far as a complete player. Shane Washington makes a nice <coughs> Return on the punt, had a good wall set up, got some good blocks, and, and brought it back about 20, 25 yards. At midfield. As Stacy he went back in the ball, and I guess it bruised his shoulder. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but as a big fourth down play right there where we didn't make it, and, and uh, that's not good, but I'd made up my mind going into the game that, that uh, you know, I was going we to challenge our offense. Big play by the defense. <coughs> Darrell Crawford and David Rocker and Walter Tate knock him loose from it. Elson Billings that comes up with it. Head out once. <coughs> we still haven't, uh, we're still not executing the passing game the way it needs to be, but uh, I do think that we went to establish one thing yesterday, that, that we can still run the football and that offensive line can still come off and create running room. <coughs> There's a big fullback running inside, and Mississippi State was a, we knew coming in was a running football team. Great coverage by Corey Barlow, and that's a... Uh, that was a third down play. There were a lot of big third down plays yesterday, and it was a great interception on the part of D'Amico Anderson, and the official said he was out of bounds, and I guess it was. <coughs> 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 I hope they can muffle this cough a little bit, and I, I do apologize. Cough on, Coach. Don't worry about it. The, uh, it's a great uh, uh, play on the part of Shane Washington right there, feeling that punt, because it was a short punt and a line drive. Norm, if you don't feel those kind, they'll get a 20, 25-yard roll on them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> great run right here by James Joseph and... and and I think, without question, to me, that was James Joseph's finest hour yesterday mm -hmm. because, uh, again, Mississippi State has got a fine defensive football team, and you can just see him right here is where that I thought that, that uh, at this point in the game, you know, he had elevated his play to, mm -hmm. to the point to where he was trying to win the football game by himself. And, and uh, not that he didn't have some help, but I just didn't feel like that everybody out there was playing at the same tempo he was. And, it doesn't take but one guy to jump out front like that for the rest of them to fall in. There's you pointed that out in the halftime dressing room, didn't you, Coach? Right. The, the uh, Dennis Wallace and Elton Billingsley, and great hit by John Wiley. That's the second or third week in a row that John's come up with a big hit in the secondary and knocked the ball loose from him. <clears throat> halftime, it's nothing to nothing. And, and again, Phil, you know, 
to me, this is, we, we uh, you know, if we were playing good and, and everything was, it was falling in place for us, then, uh, then I wouldn't necessarily want to be in that position. You'd like to have a comfortable leader to have for, mm -hmm. but where we're trying to, to, to get a handle on the real personality of this football team, you know, we needed the kind of challenge that we got yesterday from Mississippi State, and I think that uh, the second half, you know, we grew up and, and gained a lot of confidence, and, and I think something good's going to come from it. All right. This is something that that uh, that you remember as long as you live, and and. Uh, you can learn something from it that you can't learn in church, you can't learn on the, in the school. Even your mom and daddy can't teach you what you learned that other night. You learn that from believing and working and making the sacrifices and, and never giving up and keeping faith and, and, and all of the things that I try to teach you and preach about, and, uh, and I'm so happy that you had the opportunity to experience what comes from all of that. It's very, it's hard for me to come up with the right words right now to, to, to just express how I feel, because I've, I've, uh, Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Last night, in typical Auburn, Florida, heart-stopping fashion, the Tigers came back to win 10 to 7. Coach, that one will have to go in the family album. Well, I don't think that we've ever had a a big old win in Auburn since I've been there. And uh, it was uh, it was one of those that kind of, it brought back uh, the things that our program stands for. And, and uh, of course, this football team has just played it, but we hadn't just played it in one except against LSU. And uh, as, uh, it, was a, it was a great, it was a great win and, and uh, a lot of, the Florida coaches and their players deserve a lot of credit for they fought. They fought. for the what they put in the game to not get what you know they might have gotten out of it. But our football team just you know it just kept coming back and, and getting stronger as the game went along, and and then you know we get the field goal blocked and and then they come right back. That was a 19 play drive, right. wasn't it? To get nothing and, to, and got no points out of it. The defense went right back on the field and stopped Florida and got the offensive ball back. And then we took it down, and then it was fourth and 11, I guess, at the end when Reggie completed the pass. Let's go in the dressing room now and talk to the principals involved in that late touchdown pass. What was the play? Uh, it was, it was uh, it's called 60, and we had four straight uh, go routes. And uh, as soon as I came off the ball, uh, I knew, you know, I knew I was going to be open. I guess it was a busted coverage. Everybody went down inside. And, uh, and I knew as soon as I came off the ball, I was open, and was, I was hoping Reggie would see me. Did it look like slow motion when that ball was coming in? Yes, sir, it did. I, I thought it was going to take an eternity for it to get to me. But uh, it was a great throw by Reggie, and, and uh, just a great play. Weak safety. He drifted to the middle of the field. 
shame. He faded in, in the seam. He's wide open. And you saw it. Right. Did you think the ball would ever get there? <laughs> no, I didn't. I thought the longest pass ever threw. All night they had given us, and we thought we might have the weak seam over there because they were doubling ace in the middle and and uh, they sort of getting in between us on the weak side, especially when we had two receivers over there. And, uh, it, it's not anything brilliant. It just happened that that was the situation that that call was designed for. And, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer, more unselfish team guy than Shane Wazza. Things tend to slow down when, when things happen like that. Did you think that ball would ever get there? Oh, no. And then I started watching his feet, and then I looked back at his hands, and and uh, the good Lord let him catch it and, and catch it in my hands. <laughs> then I saw the referee do this, and then we all jumped out of the press box. <laughs> Tell me about Emmett Smith. Um, 86 yards. That's all. That's that's the highlight of, of tonight's game. Um, Emmett was held 86. Um, leading rush always averaging 100, and came in here to face those Tigers and didn't get number 86. What does this do to you guys when when the offense come back and this one like that? Uh, you know, it boosts our confidence, you know, just make us believe in them even more. We never doubted the they fact. They're not bad guys, that's all. No, they're not bad guys, you know. <laughs> they can do it. Came in the game, you know, wanted to do that. Knew he would be a, a threat, you know, one of the best backs in the country. Could give us some problems if, if, if he got outside. So we we came in the game with, with that in mind, you know, just keying on him and take away the cutback lane from him and just stop him, period. But what does this do to a defense that needed a little lift from the offense, Elvis? Uh... <laughs> It, I think it, it, it brings us closer together. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt like defensively we, we whipped a lot all over the field. Yeah. I felt like we really did. But uh, just like Coach Dodge said, you know, it wasn't pretty, but <laughs> you can't ask for anything yeah. better. A win's a win. A win's a win. That looks like you know, a familiar face. You yep, know, uh, Mr. Connor that uh, makes our stadiums so beautiful every week and his granddaughter. The uh, great night for football. Phil, I don't think, unless you know this football team been close to him, you really don't realize the significance of what happened last night <coughs> because of the fact that we've been in such close games for the last six weeks and you know, we pushed and pushed and pushed and they're all tired and they're all sore and they're beat up and, and Florida coming in fresh with a week off and, and you could tell that when the game started last night they were much quicker than we were. But as the game game wore on, we got closer and closer to that difference. Mm -hmm. Great play right there by the defense, and the defense just continues to play extremely well. Darrell Crawford and <coughs> Elson Billingsley, they're all doing well. Here's a big play in the ball game right here. We had a, a I don't know whether a missed run route or they did a good job with the coverage or whatever, but Reggie got trapped back there and trying to scramble. We lost the ball and gave it to him on the five-yard line. And they take it in the score. Be down on a touchdown. I, don't, I think we could have played all night long and they wouldn't have scored if, if we hadn't given the ball in that kind of field position. Go to the second quarter now with a score 7 <coughs> nothing Florida. Let's continue there. As the best outside linebacker in the, in the conference right there, number 94, uh, Craig Ogletree. And... David Rocker is playing extremely well, and there's Tim Cromartie, and, and Fernando Horn made some big plays last night. Elton Billingsley, Walter Tate, great hit by Frankie Stancunas, and Eric Ramsey there. And as that quarterback does this, he's a great athlete. There's Frankie Stancunas again, and, and um, look like uh, Alex Thomas. Third and two coming here, big play. These are all, every, listen, this is a game of inches and every inch counted last night and great lick and hit and tackle and core of ball over with the first lick was hit by Fernando Horn. Their next series now. <coughs> that guy right there just slip and slide and move and adjust and whatever and run hard. And Third and four. Fast and quick and... Big play by Elton Billingsley, gets his hands up, knocks the ball down. John Wilder's back there. They punt to us, and actually down the ball on the one-yard line. We came within a penalty of having a 99-yard drive here for a touchdown. Coach, this seems Comes to be when the passing game came to life. Well, we, just, we had to get it off the goal line, and, and I thought that Coach Blakeman... 
The offensive coaches did a great job of calling the game last night and making us balanced enough as Electron, Darrell Williams, big play, and there's the guy right there on the side of us. Everybody on our football team, Electron, is just a fine, fine human being and, and is playing outstanding football for us right now. And last night, I'm, here's the play to Alexander for the touchdown. Reggie throws a perfect strike, and Alexander gets behind the coverage, and <coughs> we get a call back that uh, was big in the game, but they never gave up. They never lost hope, and I felt at the halftime that, that uh, we were going to win the football game, and I think the players did too, and I think that little, the, the little uh, offensive spurt there right before the half, we went in with momentum even though we didn't get the points in the game. We'll be back in just a minute. Coach, most of us who follow SEC football know of the Chucky Mullins tragedy, the Ole Miss defensive back who suffered, uh, paral paral uh, suffered paralysis after being hit two weeks ago. And there is a trust fund established now uh, for his lifetime care, and he will need lifetime care. And that's the address, Mullins Trust Fund, P.O. Box 249, University of Mississippi, 38677, if you'd like to send a donation to that trust fund. Uh, Phil, I wish we'd have gotten some footage on the on the 39 team that mm -hmm. opened the stadium. You know, last night was the uh, 50th anniversary of our stadium. We played Florida Open Stadium, I think, November 30th, 1939. Mm -hmm. That was two weeks after I was born. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, they completed a touchdown they, pass. <laughs> uh, Coach Dick McGowan to Babe McGee, and I got a chance to see Rufus Dill that was on that team. I, close friends from Tuscaloosa and, and uh, got a chance to visit with all of them before the game and 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 I tell you it was a spry looking group, <laughs> Ken Lott and I mean they and that group gets together every year somewhere in around and plays golf and whatever, but they are still very active. Okay, it was quite a night. Quite a night, the fiftieth anniversary <coughs> celebration of Jordan Hare, and we'll return with the big second half in just a minute. I've been very fortunate to be a part of, of two world championship teams, and I'm fortunate to, to, to have played professional baseball. But it all comes back to Auburn University. The background, uh, the education that I got, uh, and, and it seems like everybody around has heard of Auburn University, uh, knowing that while I was playing baseball throughout and, and traveling, I would always hear War Eagle. They, they gave us a the inspirational lift that when we needed at times and and uh, there's a guy right there that has gotten a lot of a lot of unnecessary criticism for the problems that we're having offensively the problems that we're having offensively are a team thing they're not a quarterback thing you can see as we're playing <coughs> the same thing that uh, defensively as Stacey Danner didn't play last night with Bruce Shoulder and James Joseph played hurt and a lot of others played hurt out there there's David Rocker again, and one of the big like David played a great football game last night. One of the big plays of the game right here, Coach. Third and two. Quint it's uh, Quentin Riggins and, and um, a replay. A good play right there by Benny uh, Pierce. Benny's coming along and, and uh, getting a little playing time. We got playing a lot of young folks, and they're getting better every week. Jane Watson does a great job of fielding kicks last night, and they, they punted nine times, Phil, and run that one back 10 yards, and, and that's first down, and first downs are important. Going to Victor Hall, Victor had a good night catching the football, and <coughs> pick up a nice first down, get the ball out to 50 yards, and this our drive. This is a field goal drive. This is a field goal drive. There's a good run by James Joseph, and Florida's a very, very quick, football team that just has a great throw and catch to Dale Overton, and I don't believe we got the yardage right there that we should have gotten on that deal. I don't know. But anyway. Watch this ball bounce on the crossbar. I tell you, this, this, uh, ooh, is one, there's, there's something to be said for that ball bouncing your way. <laughs> and that one bounced our way and made the difference in the ball game. As a Douglas, and great play by John Wilson, and, and uh, played the the little sneak play of the naked bootleg to perfection. 
Watch this lick. Daryl Crawford, Nando Horn, Walter Tate. <coughs> Fourth quarter now. Auburn's quarter. This is a uh, nice run on the, on the draw trap. And uh, the beginning of a 19-play drive that you get nothing out of, Coach. As Reggie does a nice job of putting the ball down and making the close first down or close to a first down, we get it to the next play. And there's Darrell Williams, and Darrell has played more in the last couple of ball games. He's going to play more in the future. This Reggie does a great, there. great job of getting rid of the football. I mean, just fighting and struggling and scratching, and, and it's, uh, he gets rid of it and doesn't take the sack. We can do a great job right here. Elton Billings is down in the ball at the one-yard line. Florida had two minutes. Well, they, what happened, they sent a late substitute in, and the kid ran off on our side of the field, which is illegal, and they got a five-yard penalty, which gave us the first down. Reggie hitting Victor Hall again and get the ball down to the fourth and one here. Taking it on down inside the 10 of third and seven play coming right here at the 17. Reggie again hits Victor, and I guess he's got it down inside the 10 now. Mm -hmm. Second and goal and on the six. We, didn't, we weren't real polished on that play, but they stopped us at the five, and we try to run and play and don't get it in, and that guy just does a great job jumping up high and blocking the kick. A lesser team might have laid over here. <clears throat> well, we had time, and, and uh, our defense did their job. They come back, and I don't know who that is, Darrell Williams and Tate, Walter, Walter Tate. Tate, and there's Richard Shea there, makes a play. David Rocker. Third and six coming. Dan Cooner. There's Walter Tate again, got him by the foot. Craig Ogletree, D'Amico Anderson. They all playing and playing hard. There's Ricky Sutton. A fair catch it. 3.56 left in the game now. One timeout left, which you'll use momentarily. Reggie does a nice job of dropping the ball off to James Joseph. And Second and four here. As a, again, Alex Strong running a little hunt play inside. Electron makes a nice run here on the sweep. Second and seven. Reggie. Gets outside of containment, picks up a nice first down. I just, you know, I'm just amazed at how those defensive linemen for Florida can run, how quick they are. We knew they were good coming in. This is a, a sack on that part, and we actually had a few of our guys kind of knock each other off of the protection. Second and 24. But Reggie does a great job right here getting the ball, and, and uh, Greg Taylor does a great job of running with it after he catches it. All the time out. Jeff Catullo's in that tackle down in place of Rob Selby. And, of course, Reggie gets good protection right there from John Hudson and Brad Johnson and uh, Mark Rose, Bob Meek, John Hudson, Ed King, working together as a team. This was a fourth down play. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. There's, there's Jeff Catullo right there blocking that best pass rusher. I'm not sure, but I believe when we look at the film, we're going to see that we had three guys open. I believe Alexander was open and, and Greg Taylor both. And um, Reggie yeah. just, you know, he, he went to Shane. And, of course, this is the last play of the game, a Hail Mary for them and five seconds left. And Eric Ramsey goes up and knocks it down and has a little hugging and <laughs> celebrating there on the field with Reggie after the ball game because I, you, you really can't describe the closeness and the relationship that a head football coach has with his quarterback because he's the only guy on the football team that's even close to the kind of pressure and maybe even more so as the head football coach. And, uh, you know, when things go well, he gets more credit than he deserves, and when he don't go well, he gets more criticism than he deserves. So we'll be back in just a <coughs> minute. Louisiana Tech.
Saturday, 1 o'clock, Jordan Hare. A few tickets remain for that. What are your plans, Coach? Well, we need to get some people well, and we need to we need to get rested. We're a tired, beat-up football team right now. And that six-game run has we, been tough. We can't stay on the field long, and we're not going to do a lot of contact work this week and, and hope that we don't go backwards because uh, Louisiana Tech will be a fine football team. They can move the football and score points. And, and uh, you know, this day and time, anybody you play has got a chance to beat you, and, and uh, this week will be no different. All right, and we'll have the replay on Sunday for you. Thank you for joining us. I'm mighty proud of you for, for doing what you had to do to, to, to more or less ice the game away in the first half. And uh, I hope that we didn't get anybody. I hope Bob's not hurting anybody else that, that uh, you know, won't be able to, to go next week. You know what we got in front of us as far as, as Georgia's concerned? Uh, great week of preparation that starts there. And uh, we don't need, we need to start right now in, in your preparation for Georgia. Now don't, don't wait till tomorrow, don't wait till Monday. You ought to live your life from the time you walk out of this dressing room today. Conduct yourself tonight, handle your social life, your personal life in such a manner that you're going to be a better football player next week than you were today, for sure. It's going to take everything we got and then some in. Going to their place, they got a good football team. And, uh, you know, I think that, that uh, it's obvious that, that we got some tools if we can put it all together and get consistent with it, then... Uh, you know, we can do some things offensively and certainly defensively, too. So, uh, you know, I'm fully aware that it's hard to be at the top of your game every week, and we certainly didn't play 60 minutes of football out there today, but, you know, as life was over, we won. Uh, enjoy the weekend, but bottom line, man, let's get ready for Georgia. In a short span of the second quarter yesterday for a 38-23 to 23 win over Louisiana Tech. Is that what you expected, Coach? Well, no, I really didn't expect them to score that many points against us, Phil. But um, hey, we knew coming in that they had a good football team and they could move the ball, and, and uh, they're not a bad defensive football team. Uh, they were highly motivated. Well, they were, and, and uh, we weren't. And, um, you know, I, 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 I was afraid of that, but... Um, there's not a lot you can do about it sometimes. You know, I, we played well enough to win, and uh, we got uh, the, the, the obvious thing to me is that, is that, you know, we didn't do any contact work last week, and fundamentally we're just not as good a football team yesterday, and, and uh, we're tackling, and, you know, we're kind of on the edges and on the corners and not down the middle of them, and just, uh, you know, it wasn't a, wasn't a very pretty game on Auburn's part. I had some good things in the game. Uh, you know, Alexander Wright got back involved in, in our offense and gave us a, some big plays, and uh, Darrell Williams, Electron, got, uh, you know, got the carries, and I think yesterday's game will be good for him, and I think he can help us. Uh, in fact, I know he can. And, um, you know, we threw the ball more, and I hope that... Uh, you know, we need to be we need to be about to have the kind of mixture we had yesterday and and uh, as far as the running the pass is concerned we threw for 230 yards i believe and rushed for 207 and um, we just we need to you know the second half we just weren't consistent with it not really interested because the score was so high we'll uh we'll show you some of the comments now of some of the players involved in the big plays yesterday yeah, it was part of the plan uh we felt like uh you know, we could take advantage. We, did, we felt that, you know, their weak spot was in their secondary, and we felt like we could take advantage of that uh, by throwing the long ball. Uh, you know, we got some big plays that, that helped us move the ball. The kickoff return, almost. Um, that was just something, you know, the ball hit the ground. And when using the ball hits the ground and it's not caught in the air, that's a, you know, the timing is off. And I think that's what happened. The time was just off on the, the coverage team. Is this what you've been waiting for? Yes, sir. This is what I've been waiting for, and I like, you know, I... I hope that the coach can get, get more confidence in the now they put me in in a big situation, a big game situation, because I really do believe I can contribute to the team a lot. 
Let me tick off a number or two here. One interception, your first of the year. Two batted balls. A sack that you won't get credit for. Oh, man, I can't get credit <laughs> for my sack. Oh, that's what I take pride in, the sacks. But it's just one of those things. I just have to make up for it next week or whatever and go out, you know, my personal goals and try to reach those. But the interception was... A matter of he telegraphed the ball. I, I, I had a feeling he was going to throw it all the time. He tried to look me off at first, and then he came back, and I made a good break on the ball, and it was there. You look like a running back. Well, well it kind of took me back to my high school days when I used to play tight end. And <laughs> catch him over the middle and take the distance. <laughs> I didn't break down properly, and I just kind of stuck my arm right there. Before I knew it, the ball popped loose, and I, I think Roy Hunter was able to come up with the recovery which uh, made a real big turnaround in the game for us. Did you see Dennis knock the ball loose? Or? No, I didn't see it. I just saw, you know, I came down, I broke down to make the tackle. And then, you know, somehow I, he broke away from me, and then I saw the ball on the ground. You finally make an interception, and you're out of bounds. Yes, we've been talking about it all week long. You know, maybe this is the game we're going to get an interception, but I guess it just ain't meant to be this year. Maybe next week I might get one. Yeah, why are all the up-front guys making these interceptions? Linebackers, people <laughs> like that, why not? I don't know. I guess they've been watching us from, from past years, and they try to <laughs> imitate us or, or whatever. You had a fumble recovery, though. Yeah, wow. Well, um, they made it front, made a great lick up front. The ball just popped right back out in the secondary, and I was there. I made some plays, but I may still make some mistakes. My still, my knee's not still 100%. But I guess I just go with it. Ball yesterday, still in the eleven. You know, it was it was just one of those days where you have one of them a year. I guess you know that we've been in such a, uh, a hard push and playing one close game right after another and big games and. And I think our fans probably were, were tired and and not as excited, and our players weren't. And, but uh, they just kicked the field goal. Right. They they moved the football against us, and and uh, they had great return here by good blocking, and then uh, Alexander just outruns the the uh, gravity right there because <laughs> they had him they had angles on him, and he outran the angles. And here's a nice run by James Joseph, blocking out front by Alex Strong. And uh, I'm glad that Anthony Brown got a chance to play yesterday. Of course, I saw that, that uh, Bob Meeks got hurt. I'm, you know, and I'm not sure what his status is going to be for the you know, next couple of games. But Anthony's worked hard, and he's an outstanding young man. And I'm glad he he come in and play and contribute to the to the win. <coughs> Reggie runs it in on a keeper. And they come and, back. And they had they had uh, a kid right there as a fine running back, Derek Douglas, and and uh, the quarterback did a great job for him and got good receivers. They do they do a good job of doing what they do. Um, and you know defensively we made some plays and then we didn't make some plays and. But there's a guy right there that plays every week and just, you know, you just line him up and he's ready and, and make you know who you're playing against, and that's uh, Craig Ogletree. And that kid makes a great play right here, throwing the ball back across the green inside, and that kid, uh, the other one makes a good catch. And that was a third down play, too. Punch it in for the touchdown. <laughs> and it makes it 7-3, to three, or 10-7, to seven, I guess. And then, of course, we come back and, and we get us one. James Joseph running and Stacy Danny didn't dress out yesterday and it looked like Victor Hall downfield blocking in front of him, Jeff Couture, Brad Johnson and good throw and catch on the part of Reggie, good protection. But the drive stalls. We're now in the second quarter and things are about to really pick up here. Well, we scored a lot of points in a short period of time right here. Nice play by the defensive front. And there's Richard Shea and Daryl Crawford and Tracy Rocker and Quentin Higgins. <coughs> David Rocker made the hit there. John Wiley recovered the fumble and we come right back to work and Reggie hits Greg Taylor on the turn and James makes a three or four yard run here behind five yards. Second and five coming here is Chris, a big Chris Gray and longest run from scrimmage this year. And I didn't realize this is our second touchdown. This is Daryl Electron Williams. 
Makes people miss him, breaks tackles. Goes in from what? Uh, 36 yards. 36 yards out for the touchdown. And <coughs> that's uh, no, no doubt that he's going to give us a big lift in, in the running game. And he's excited and big lift for him, I would think. Too, James too. Joseph out there congratulating him. And Electron's the kind of kid that everybody loves. He's the uh, one that the old ones care about him and the young ones care about him because he cares about everybody. It's just not a, you know, we're, we're excited about him being part of our football team for the next few years. And pressure on the quarterback, but that little guy can run, can run. Get away from the pressure and throws back inside. Doesn't make a first down. That kicking game was excellent, Coach. Punting and yeah. field goal kicking. Well, that guy kicked two field goals right at 50 yards or something. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Shane Watson runs it back 10 or 12 yards. Reggie hits James Joseph in the flat, picks up 14, 15 yards. That guy's will hit you, I tell you that. Pick up the Coming blitz. The blitz. This is the play we call, hoping that they'll blitz when we, when we got it called. And Alexander runs the post route, and Reggie hits him for the touchdown. And that's the reason people don't blitz much and blitz us much, and that's the reason we don't blitz much ourselves. Big play right here. Dennis Wallace knocks the ball loose from, from that guy, and Roy Hunter gets on it at the, what, the 14-yard line, whatever. Right, 14. And uh, we run in reverse, Alexander. A good shield block or whatever by Reggie here. Anthony Brown's out there as Pat Autry. Alexander runs it in for the touchdown. It's 28 to 10. With more to come. Come right back to first play from scrimmage. They throw an interception. Craig Ogletree does a great job of kind of baiting the guy and then breaking on the ball and making the interception. <coughs> There's Electron again, running for the touchdown and that makes it 35 to 10. <coughs> you see his confidence building, he's beginning no, to break tackles. Man, no doubt, and I mean, it's, it's there and he's ready and, and he's gonna play. Third and two here. The rest of it basically is just kind of back and forth, mm -hmm. and they move the football a little bit, and there's a nice play by D'Amico Anderson on a third and one situation, stops him for a two-yard loss. Good play right there by uh, Craig Ogletree again and, and uh, David Rocker. There's David again on the tackle with Quentin Riggins. And, and a couple and of Tigerettes. Right, two little Auburn girls, and that's a halftime score, 35 to 10. Mm -hmm. Out of the way, coach. In the second half, Coach, we were doing a telecast of this. We had <coughs> to tell a lot of jokes this half. <laughs> well, you know, we start off pretty good. Uh, we kick off to him and stop him. That's a great play by Elton Bennisley and Wayne Bowser. And uh, we stop them first time they have it. And they have to punt. Ball has one of the batted balls by Craig Ogletree. And there's Fernando Horn back there putting pressure on the quarterback. And outstanding run right here by James Joseph. And he got the ball down, good field position, and <coughs> kind of stall out. <laughs> Throw the quick screen right here to Alexander. Good block by Ed King and, and uh, John Hudson. Third down play here going in the end zone. The, uh, this is Wynn Lyles, coach, his 30th field goal of his career. He is 11 of 14 this year. Well, Wynn's had a great year. And uh, we just, you know, we haven't had it in that position much for him to kick field goals. And this is a busted coverage right here. <coughs> we lucky they didn't score. But we... You're fighting up, people we, now. Right, we're playing a lot of folks and, and uh, young people and... Completed out of bounds. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Dressed 113, I believe. I don't know, but I'm glad that all of our walk-ons got it. There's David Rocker making the play, and they end up missing the field goal here. Good play by them and a good tackle by us. 
Martin, whether it's D'Amico Anderson or John mm -hmm. Wiley or who. They miss a field goal and Reggie comes back and makes a nice throw and catch with Dale Overton. But uh, we dressed all the walk-ons and we've got the finest group of guys that, that uh, work every day here. Yes. <coughs> Jeff could do a little blocking out front and electron running and... Still in the third quarter. Fernando Horn, I believe, batted that one down. Right, right. The quarterback did a great job of just, you know, staying away from the rush and avoiding the rush. And here's Eric Ramsey and makes the interception, but it's out of bounds. Avoiding the rush and buying a little time and <coughs> throwing those balls in the seams. He makes another scramble. We lost position on the guy and they get it down to the 13-yard line. And they kick a field goal here. This team beat Southwestern Louisiana, <coughs> who played Alabama a really good game on their hometown. Well, they, they beat Southwest 40 to 14, and you know, comparative scores, they beat they beat Tulsa, the team that beat Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So they, they, you know, they're not a bad football team, but they're not. You know, we we helped them yesterday and. <coughs> There's the sack that uh, Craig got would have been a tremendous play for us. We get a holding penalty right there, and they get the ball back in field position to kick a field goal. <coughs> and that, they kick a, I believe that guy kicks a 52 yarder here. Yeah, that's amazing. A lot of pressure. He's good at avoiding pressure, too. He's very, he's, uh, he's very active. 53 <coughs> yards for Stover, their field goal kick. When you were coming in, the guy had a strong leg. There's Coach Witt, Walsh Tate. Larry Probably Young. talking about pressure and quarter being containing that quarterback. There's <coughs> throwing the victor and all. There's Electron again. Got pressure on Reggie. He throw. makes a great mm. scramble and so does Greg Taylor. As the fans, the ones that were there had a good time. <laughs> oh. <coughs> nice hit on the part of Alex Strong and Quentin Riggins. Here's a touchdown. They get good pressure on him. <coughs> we turn him loose. Makes a throw and a great catch in the end zone by the running back. They are fighting hard. Sub Walter by Trainer. <coughs> Does such a great job with our players. And Isn't he close to him? He is really is exceptional. Travis Galloway and Tim Tillman and Bert Lively, all of them having a good time playing. <coughs> Coach Peace from Texas Tech has done an excellent job with our football team and and uh you know, they, they, I think they're in for some exciting times in Ruston. Okay, the final 38. It takes a lot of people to make a winning season. People who believe in teamwork. Okay. Athens, uh, this Saturday, needing a big win to position yourself in the conference race. Well, it'll, it, uh, it's the second part of Amen Corner, and uh, they've got a done a great job with the football team got a great tailback in hampton playing outstanding defense and uh, tally's yesterday. done a good job for him at quarterback they're throwing and running the ball well had a big win yesterday so it'll be auburn and georgia on tbs 11:40 kick next saturday and we'll have the replay for you on sunday thank you for joining us see you next week coach Di I think that what you saw out there today is what was supposed to be. This thing, this thing at Auburn, 
and what you what you represent out there, what you what you guys represented today, wasn't no spur of the moment thing. You know, there's some deep roots in the ground at Auburn. I'm talking about there was some deep roots in the ground before I got there, and and since I've been there, and a lot of you guys, you fourth and fifth year seniors, you got some deep roots in the ground, and I never questioned you, never doubted you, from 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 day one. I mean, I knew what was there. I knew what was there, but I just, some kind of way, I just, you know, it, it, I kept struggling trying to, and uh, and I think we all did. And you have it today, you know, today you got, you got to enjoy one and, and, and enjoy the, the fruits of your work and paying the price and a lot of the suffering that you've been through. It's a big win for you, man. A big, big win for you. And, uh, you know, we're sitting, we're no different. We're no different right now than where we've been every year when we've had a chance to win the conference. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Yesterday, the 93rd renewal of the South's oldest football rivalry and a big day for Auburn, 20-3 to three over the Dogs. And Coach, a tremendous win, a complete win for your team. It's tremendous. Well, it was, a, it was a one for the players. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, and that they're the ones that I'm the happiest for because uh, they haven't gotten all the rewards that they should have gotten out of this football season to this point. Uh, you know, we had two very disappointing losses that uh, I thought they showed a championship hard in, even though we did lose. And then we had great wins over LSU and Florida, and to a lot of our people, they weren't pretty, and they weren't, you know, the wins weren't big enough. And uh, yesterday was one that uh, I think that, uh, was kind of like what we all been looking for. And I'm proud of our coaches. They had a great plan for Georgia, and, and uh, they've done an outstanding job all year long. And uh, again, yesterday was one of those things that, uh, and you know, the score could have been higher, but uh, it was it was just right for me. It was comfortable, and I don't care about running up a score on. George or anybody else for that matter and and uh, and George has got a young football team and coach Goff and his staff have done a good job and and uh, you know they're gonna win a lot of football games in the future but yesterday was was Auburn's day and let's go in the dressing room now and talk to some of the players right after the game well, uh, you know, I think it was just a matter of us executing. Uh, we executed today. Our, our offensive line played great and uh, our wide receivers. And I think, you know, when everyone around you is executing, it's just a matter of you going out there and, and, and doing what you have to do. So, uh, you know, I did that, and, uh, you know, we had a big game on offense. Once they start watching our running game, then the pass game opens up. And like I said, when you put those two together, uh, you're, you're going to be effective. You think this will help you two weeks from now? Yes, I think it will. I think that, you know, I don't, it's nothing else for me to do right now. It's confidence where I think all my confidence is there, and I'm just ready to continue on in, in a couple more weeks. It was a great wall set up. Uh, all those guys did a great job setting the wall up, and all I had to do was get behind and run. Think you might score? Yes, sir. I was hoping I would. Uh, they had one guy back where the punter was back, and they had another safety man, and, and I couldn't cut back because I had uh, inside, inside support coming. Did we see the real Auburn offense today? Yes, you did. You've seen the, the real Auburn Tigers. You've seen the hard nose running and the passing game all in one. You watched the film Sunday? Coach told me, you know, Rob got hurt and Bob got hurt, so he told me we needed somebody to come down and help out the team, so I just said I'd help out. So. Well, you do a lot of that anyway as a tight end, so well, it wasn't that much of an adjustment. Huh? Yes, sir, not much at all. I just had to pick up the plays. You know, they're a little different than tight ends, so it wasn't that bad of an adjustment. First half, I mean, it was incredible. We all came together, and you know, we were really moving the ball, and, uh, and everybody just felt like a family. It was, it was real neat. I read the play all the way, and, uh, you know, I couldn't have did it without, you know, Craig and Lamar and all those guys up front uh, giving the quarterback pressure and enabling me to, uh, to make a great play. I think the, the main important thing about the game today was our offense coming out moving the ball. They did a good job moving the ball. And our defense, we came in and played together. We just played it together as a unit today. That's the most important thing. What would I say if I told you guys they had about 50 yards rushing all day? <laughs> Believe, Believe that. Believe that. <laughs> Believe that. That's 
pressures. Although sometimes they really were never comfortable standing in the box. Most definitely. And when we first, when we started getting out, them, I saw his feet start to move. The hot feet didn't want to sit back there. So I knew that was the key, and that encouraged the defensive line to keep coming with it. We wanted to make, you know, just gamble on the, their tendencies, and it worked out and put them in predictable situations, got on the quarterback. And then you knew when they, they quit running entirely, you knew things were going to happen. It was ours all the way. I, Tree said, hey, we want to run strong 50, and I'm, I'll get the quarterback. You just cover the man. And I said, perfect. Oga okay, and the big crowd on hand at uh, Trumpet Stadium as the Tigers take the field. The clinic. Oh, you okay? I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. Early to play football, but it's great, to be a great day for a football game, and and we didn't take long. Elson Billingsley makes a great play, and and uh, Elson Billingsley, I told him Friday before we played, is you know one of the highlights of the season as far as I'm concerned, and I know Coach Whit would well, look at that. <coughs> you know he went through the struggles in early in the year, and since he's come back, he has been an outstanding football player, probably playing as well as anybody in the league at outside linebacker right now, with the exception of. Craig Oglesworth would probably make him, uh, it had to be close. But that was a big play there. That stopped the first down. Corey Barlow made a great tackle and stopped the guy for a yard from making the first down. Gotten a lot of production from Victor Hall at tight end. <coughs> Reggie had a great day yesterday, just making the little soft passes and hunting and pecking and, you know, throwing the possession, throwing the Take advantage of what Georgia was doing. Reading the blitz and checking off at the line and doing the things that he had to do. Fine play by Anthony Judge and uh, Craig Ogletree and John Wilson and Wayne Bowsman and Fernando Horn. There's Tim Cromartie at nose guard. Wayne Bowsman comes up with a nice play right here, keeping him from making the first down. Anthony Judge played with a sore knee. Here comes the first big break off the kicking end. And we had some great blocks out there. Roy Hunter, Dennis Wright, Mike Smith, and Wayne Bowser. Uh, Benny Pierce had a great block. Alex Thomas. Alex too. Thomas and, and uh, Eric Ramsey. <coughs> Just uh, we get the ball and, and uh, we 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 had the opportunity yesterday, and Georgia did a good job against us. We didn't get the ball in the end zone, but we got the field goal and got the lead and, and set the tempo of the football game there. And Lyle is now 12 <coughs> of 15 on the year. Georgia comes back and, and uh, moves the ball a little bit, and, and uh, then we stop them and get it back, and we've got them kind of backed up here, and there's Quentin Riggins and, and Craig Ogletree, and... Hampton we did a great job on him. As Lamar Rogers batting the ball down, Lamar play, played better than, you know, he played good early in the year, and he's kind of been off his game a little bit. He came back and looked like he played really well yesterday. That was uh, Craig Ogletree and, and I believe, Fernando I Horn. Was, yes. It's James Joseph, and this is James' last run in the ball game right here. He got a deep thigh bruise. I hope it's not too bad because... He means a lot to our football team. Same drive, <coughs> second quarter now. This little guy right here did a great job yesterday, and after the ball game, everybody wanted to talk about Electron, and, and of course, I want to talk about Electron too, but <laughs> <coughs> to me, the difference in the ball game was the guys up front. There's Brad Johnson and Ed King and John Hudson and Jeff Catullo and Rob Selby and Chris Grace made the move from tight end to tackle, and Anthony Brown, they all I uh, kind of challenged them Tuesday in practice, and, and they responded, and great run right there. Now, that, uh, you can give Electron the credit for that. We went in there and ran into a big pileup. They had him stopped, and he wouldn't quit his, let his feet quit moving, and came off of it, made about a 13, 14-yard run, and set up this touchdown to... Greg Taylor. Greg had a great day yesterday. He had uh, six catches and... 109 yards. <coughs> just really played well. As pursuing the football, Quentin Riggins and, and uh, Walter Tate and David Rocker and there's John, John Wiley on coverage along with uh, Dennis Wallace and, and uh, Eric Ramsey. Another scoring drive coming. <coughs> 
tell you the, the, the thing it, that I like what I'm seeing in Lexicon is he's, you know, he's falling forward. There's a nice little misdirection pass to, to again, to Victor Hall. Well, There's third and two there. And here's a screen, screen pass to Stacy Danley. And Stacy played and gave us a big, big lift in the ball game yesterday, particularly with, with uh, James being out. This, that was a quarterback draw. John Hudson and, had a big block. Right here is a great, great play on the part of uh, Reggie Slack. He, he, Georgia was running both linebackers through, and and uh, rather than make the handoff on the draw with all that penetration, he pulls it down and makes sure that we're not going to have a bad play and ends up making a making a big play out of it. The throw and catch to Pedro Cherry and come right back and hit Alex Strong down to the one-yard line. And Electron takes it in. <coughs> Georgia does a good job of playing goal line defense and the score is 17 to nothing. They come back and, and John Wiley makes a great interception here. John had two interceptions yesterday that were very big in the ball game. And, and uh, you know, our secondary is, is playing extremely well and they're getting, we're getting good pressure up front on the quarterback. Outstanding play by uh, D'Amico Anderson, and I'm, as another guy, I'm tremendously proud of. He's been at Auburn four years, and and, and earned the start and earned the right to start yesterday, and has played outstanding football for us all year long. Seventeen to nothing at the half. Well, the uh, Die Clan was well. Well, over. they were all there. <laughs> Brothers, sisters, mother, cousins, nephews, <laughs> all of them. Uh, and just uh, and then it was a it was a fun day. You and know, boy, the, you look up. The Dye family pulls for Georgia all year long until they play Auburn, and you know there's just the blood stickers and whatever it is, else is out there, and they pull for Auburn that day, and and they go back and pull for Georgia. So it's um, it's a great rivalry, the Georgia. Uh, it is Auburn game, and and it's one that uh, you know that I. I don't, I really, you know, I, sure, I enjoy beating Georgia. I mean, from a standpoint of, you know, that's our job and whatever, but I got a lot of close friends in Georgia, and and, uh, and they mean a great deal to me. Yeah. And, uh, and, of course, my family lives in Georgia, and the, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not the, I'm not one that enjoys rubbing a win or something, and, yeah. and I just, I don't, that's not, part of my deal and I just but it was a big win and, but it's also one that it doesn't take anything away from your competitiveness as far as playing the game is concerned and and uh, I think I think basically that's the way our players feel so it's a it's a good healthy rivalry and one that um, you know that we enjoyed and it's been a great deal to all the program in Georgia too all right we'll return for the second half in just a minute not much scoring a lot of defense Going to Auburn for four years like I did, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was uh, it was the greatest four years of my life. Um, I, I probably had the biggest thrill in my sports life there is, is our junior year when we won the SEC in golf. Everybody uh, that, that plays on the tour, most of the guys, you know, follow football. And, and man, when I'm not around here and when I'm out on the road, uh, I, I call and get reports about what Auburn's doing for the league. 18 to nothing, but you have to know that Georgia doesn't uh, die easily, Coach. You no, know, and, and um, you know, our, our players, it, it, it was, we were a little different yesterday. Than, they were excited about playing the game, and I think they were confident. And great return by Alexander Wright, and just a little there. He, he started right back off doing the same thing, just running and throwing, mixing it up. And... Um, all of our folks that have been concerned, there's a, right here a, a great throw and catch and <clears throat> puts it down to the two-inch line. It's just like the one against Florida's call back. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> great play by Walter Tate on Rodney Hampton. And Walter just keeps getting better. And he and Tim Cromartie and Richard Shea playing nose guard for us. They split it up. And it's... 
Fernando Horn and, and uh, Darrell Crawford. Great play by uh, Quentin Regan. Quentin's mother sent me a tape that she made that I certainly enjoyed listening to. She's got a beautiful voice and sings. And just, uh, has Must be a great family because he's such a great guy. Well, he is. And there's, I think, his mother and father both teachers. And he's a class young man, that's for sure, and a great competitor. Has a great read on the part of Reggie and Greg Taylor down the sideline. And <coughs> The, uh, we don't get that one in, get it close and don't get it in, and that's something we got to work on between now and our next game. We're getting it all in the end zone when we get it down there. That's Craig Ogletree and, and uh, Hampton had 29 yards rushing. Good coverage by Corey Barlow, catches the ball out of uh, two or three yards out of bounds, and Georgia kicks a field goal and <coughs> 20 to 3. And that winds up the score, but it doesn't wind up the game. Again, we have a perfect play call for Georgia's blitz. They're coming in, and, and Reggie just hits the tight end right over the line, and, <coughs> and he picks up 17, 18 yards. As again, mm. Quinn Riggins and Darrell Crawford has great pressure by Craig over three and good coverage and broke it up by Corey Barlow and Cor and Dennis Wallace and D'Amico Anderson all from Georgia. Let's do a great job in our secondary. It's great in the dressing room. You're having all the Georgia boys gather around. David Rocker, he's another one from Atlanta and, and uh, Lamar Rogers and <coughs> there's Quentin and, and uh, David Rocker again. As Electron Williams, as Ben Smith makes a tackle for Georgia, and Ben Smith is the best defensive back that we've played against maybe since we've been at, uh, at all. Great interception on part of Dennis Wallace. Good pressure from the from the defensive front, and Dennis made a great break on the ball and intercepted it. And the Georgia boy, as Stacy Danley, that uh, played hurt, no doubt, and 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 he was. You could tell that he was not quite as reckless as he has been in the past at times, but he still ran hard and, and, and made a big difference in that football game. He used him some at fullback, too. <coughs> There's uh, Reggie throwing to Alexander Wright. And Alexander's from Albany. Alexander was not a highly recruited player. He was one that was... Just uh, could run fast and didn't have the one year of college, I mean, one year of football experience playing. But he's developed into a great player. And, uh, John Wiley, great foot rush and sack on the part of Mike Campbell. And Mike, of course, you know, had the serious neck injury early in the year and, and uh, hasn't been, didn't play in, and, uh, until, you know, recently he's come back and played some and glad to he got a chance to get in there and get a sack and be part of the football team. All right, the final 20 to 3. A week off and then the first ever at Auburn, Coach. Well, that's right. And I want to see all the Auburn people get those tags to, to drive the, to drive on a car to, to, to the game in Auburn. See a lot of those. License to learn. Uh, right. We don't have the tag to show you, but you know the one I'm talking about. We've been pushing it all year long, and, and uh, it, it is a great cause. The the game uh, coming up is, is one that's going to be, you know, be another classic, just like all the Auburn-Alabama games have been over the years, and this one, of course, is going to be a little special to Auburn people because it is in Auburn. Alabama's had a great year, and, and uh, has already clinched a, a share of the uh, conference crown, and the only thing that uh, we got left to do is to earn a share of it. And uh, if we do, then we got a chance to have a three-way tie or whatever. All right. It's Auburn <coughs> and Alabama at Auburn two weeks from yesterday, and we'll have the replay for you two weeks from today. Thank you. We'll see you then. Coach Dye's apparel...
big plays win big games. And yesterday, the Auburn Tigers used the right combination in that category to beat Alabama for the fourth straight year. Actually, it was the uh, slack to right combination. Reggie Slack and Alexander Wright teamed up on seven pass completions for 141 yards, including several real backbreakers, like a 60-yard bomb in the third quarter. Wright was illegally bumped out of bounds, but still came back to catch it anyway and set up a field goal. It was that kind of a day for him and for the Tigers. When knocks you out of bounds, you can still come in and try to make a play. You know, we go over there in our team meetings a lot, you know. If the defender knock you out, you come back in and try to make a play. I knew that, so I knew I had a good chance of trying to make a catch. And it worked pretty well. We had a lot of big plays today that helped us pull this one out. And uh, we felt if we did that, then uh, we could come out with a win. Kind of stunned them coming out throwing the ball. Away. I think we did. Uh, you know, Ace, he, there's not too many people that can cover him. Uh, you know, he just ran by us. Uh, a guy a couple times and we got big plays out of it. Congratulations, Reggie. Four, four years and not having lost. That's a remarkable thing. Four and oh, that's great. Uh, you know, when you, you come to Auburn and you're playing a you have a, a bigger a bigger rival is uh, Alabama, you know, you, you really don't expect to go four and oh while you're here, but uh, you know, this is a great accomplishment for me and, and all the rest of these seniors that are here. Not only will the Tigers be basking in the glow of that win, they'll also, also be basking in the uh, Florida sunshine New Year's Day. They're heading to Tampa to play Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl, while Alabama earned a bid to the Sugar Bowl to play Miami New Year's. But the taste of sugar turned bittersweet after yesterday's loss. The Tide had hoped to be unbeaten and playing for a possible national championship. But that won't happen now. To me, it really doesn't uh, take anything away, I mean, because... This game was, you know, one of the, one of the most important games that I, you know, I ever probably ever played in. And, you know, going to Sugar Bowl is fine, but you know, we still lost today. It don't it don't help. Well, you know, we haven't been down there in you know, quite a while now. I think you know, getting an opportunity to go down now. You know, we SEC co-champs, but you know, that's that's you know, that's something that you know that helped. But still, you know, we wanted to be number one all by ourselves. But you know, we fell short today, so we could. This always. Uh, this always brings you down a little bit, you know, maybe going to Sugar Bowl or not, but, uh, you know, we're real happy to be going to Sugar Bowl. We're happy in the season what we have. We've got a bunch of terrific guys and a great coaching staff. Hey! First of all, I want to make a presentation. I want to present Coach Dow with the game ball. Sure, I'd like to be 12, 11, and old, and you know, not, but I'm gonna tell you something. I wouldn't swap this year for any year that I've been at Auburn. I wouldn't swap it, men, because I've watched you struggle and I watched you wrestle with them angels, and 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 and, and I, but I watched you grow up and become men. Do you remember me standing right here and telling you when you became one that you'd know it? I mean, you know it now. It don't make any difference who's carrying the ball. It don't make any difference who's catching it, who's rushing the pass, or who's making the tackle. As long as you've got a blue jersey on. Remember the people on the other side have had a great year. And they won't ever get recognition for the year that they've had. But they're, they're, they're an outstanding football team. They came in they came in here not only against, a, I think, a, a damn good football team, but they came in here with the, with the emotions and, and, and set of circumstances where it would have been very, very difficult for them to win. Welcome. One for the ages. The first ever at Auburn yesterday. And Auburn beat Alabama 30-20. to 20, And Pat Dye took his place alongside Neyland and Bryant and Dooley.
with three straight conference championships. You know, I'm, I'm, Congratu not, congratulations, I'm not believing what I just looked at on the screen. It was amazing. Wasn't it? I'm going to tell you something. I, you know, you, you, there's some things about life that you just, you can't, but, uh, you know, the, the, it was 50, it's been 50 years since, since, uh, since uh, there was three champions in the Southeastern Conference. The last year was 1939. Our stadium is 50 years old. I'm 50 years old, and I just looked at the screen, and the score was 30 to 20, a total of 50. That is, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. You know, maybe, maybe Alabama didn't have a chance after all when they, when they and came. And Auburn played in the Cotton Bowl and the Sugar Bowl's 50th anniversaries. Well, maybe 50 is supposed to be a special year. I would bet it has been a great year for, for our football team, and, and, uh, and the things that this football team has gone through, I talked about it a little bit in the dressing room, but it was, it's been one of the most uh, satisfying years that I've ever been. And I know I got, you know, I got a kick out of, you know, through the course of the year, fussing at our people a little bit about, you know, the way they, the way they got on our team. And, but they brought and, it home yesterday. Didn't they? Well, I'm, uh, yesterday is, is uh, I've been coaching the rest of my life, and I won't ever witness anything like yesterday. <laughs> and... Um, Anybody that's on that field that uh, was a player from Auburn or a player from Alabama, and uh, you, know, you can talk about a home field advantage if you want to, but uh, what happened yesterday at Auburn lifted our players a, a, another level, and, and there's no question that our fans had a lot to do with that coming to the ball game yesterday. Um, Let's go in the dressing room right now, Coach, and we'll talk some later. Let's hear from some of the players now, the seniors who had such a big part in the win. Tell me about this senior class before you pass out from that cigar. Well, with four in the row against Bama, three conference championships, could make history if we win the bowl game. I love these guys, and I kept faith. I never thought about losing the whole way. It's, you can't even explain it. You can't even come close to explaining it. And, and then to do it in this setting today when Alabama comes off. Oh, most definitely. First time here, and your fans and student body. Everybody's behind you. It's, it's a great feeling and people are behind us all the way. I can, I can remember if we mess up on one play, they'll put it back on the line, you know, and all the guys were tired, you know, that pulled us together. And, you know, the hard work paid off today. Yes, I'm glad I came to Auburn. I tried to get my brother to come, but he wanted to go to Alabama, so that's the consequence he had to suffer. You held him out and let Reggie look down the field and find receivers. We, you know, we knew, like, the Georgia game, we knew that'd be a key because Alabama was, uh, you know, had so many sacks and they did so many things to rush the passer and, uh, you know, we knew, or everybody felt like if we could give Reggie time, that, that he would make things happen for us, and, and he did. None of us had ever seen anything like the Tiger Walk today, and I think the fans had as much to do with it as anything. That was remarkable. Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, you know, we got down there and had to walk single file through the street, and uh, when we came in, we just said, it, it's over. There's, you know, we're going to win this thing. So somehow, some way, these people want it so bad. Best senior class that ever came down to fight. The best one. And I'm proud to be part of it. Three conferences championships you know hey you can't you can't ask for anything else i'm just glad to be here the people did their did their job for us and uh it was a great win for us we go over there in our team meetings a lot you know if the defender knock you out you come back in and try to make the play i knew that so i knew i had a good chance of trying yeah, to make a catch pretty well. and it worked pretty well i'm just glad to end out my career and like this and uh it makes this whole season worthwhile so under the circumstances that last one was about as big as any of them you know uh yeah it was Put the game away, and uh, you know they had to. That was ten points, and uh, pretty much put them away. We put points on the board. We ought to do better in spots and places this time, especially when I jumped off sides. But I think <laughs> plays like yeah, I mean we came through, and uh, we did what it took to win. And I'm glad we did. But uh, you scored after you jumped off sides. That's true. So uh, thank goodness, Coach Diamond, might not forgive me for that. If I didn't. <laughs> what a setting, Coach. What a setting. Well, it's just you know there's no way to describe. Uh, on television here for what the emotions was yesterday and you heard uh, Mark Rose talking about it. I, in nine years that I've been at Auburn, I never have liked going down that street in front of the fans. That's a player's deal and I just happen to be there in the back of the line. But I wouldn't take anything for being there yesterday and being able to, to look in, in the eyes and the faces of the Auburn people and and the, the, the hope and the, the happiness and the excitement and, and uh, I just uh, and we, we we take the first drive and take it in and it was big it was big it was a big confidence builder and I think it it set the tempo for the game it, it uh, I think that it did a lot to, to Alabama uh, 
You know, the, we felt like going into the game that we could throw the football on Alabama, and we felt like we had to run it, do both, but uh, they had given up more yardage passing than they had rushing, and this kind of set the tone. That's the first play from scrimmage. Alabama had a, has a great offensive football team, had an outstanding plan for us, and, and uh, Gary Hollingsworth is a, is a very clever quarterback, and they do a great job utilizing his talent and ability. Big sack right there by Mike Campbell. I was <clears throat> they get a turnover and get down deep here. That was a big play by Lamar Rogers and, and John uh, Wiley and Corey Barlow and uh, uh, Craig Oglesby ended up making a play. We got pressure and got to him a lot yesterday and got pressure on him. We just didn't do a very good job of covering their backs and their tight end. Of course, Lamar Russell is the best receiver that we've played against since we've been at, uh, been at Auburn. He's a, he, is, he is the best wide receiver or whatever. He is the best we've ever played against. They kick a field goal, and now they're back down uh, deep again, about to score, it would appear. But some good great goal line Good defense. coverage by John Wiley. And uh, they fake a field goal here, and, and uh, we come up with a little pressure, and, and big play, Elton Billingsley gets there, and then there's uh, Eric Ramsey and, and uh, Frankie Stan Kunison making a play on the, on the fake, and uh, that was big, because that left the score seven to three, and uh, Auburn is, uh, Alabama's coming back. A big play by Ricky Sutton. And uh, Ricky's just you playing a little to spell of uh, Elton and, and Craig Oglesby. There's another big play by Craig Oglesby. And I just wish that all the Auburn people and everybody just you could know him and, and know what a fine person he is and, and the kind of leader he is. As John Wiley. This is John made a lot of plays yesterday and played extremely well. It's a reverse great play right here by Elton Billingsley. He just walked that tight end from Alabama all the way to the sideline and comes off and makes a play on the reverse. <coughs> and Alabama comes right back and converts. It's elastic to find tailback. And uh, they take this one in. It's a great play. It's kind of a pick play, and, and uh, they execute it to perfection. And uh, Marco Battle had a great day for Alabama yesterday, and I'm glad he's, <laughs> he's a senior and won't be around anymore. But most of Alabama's football team will be back next year. People... People don't realize that, but the quarterback and Russell and lots of them will be back. And they listed in their program as they got about 30 seniors listed, but only about half of them are seniors. The rest of them are, are redshirt juniors. What you're saying is they'll be good again next year. View of the early parts of the game, Coach. There's what old, a, there's what old a glory man. flying there over the stadium. And uh, Mr. Connors and his staff had the stadium in beautiful condition. And this is a first view touchdown. out there, first touchdown. That the ball game and why to set it it's, uh, it was beautiful i'd like to take this off this our last show and take this opportunity to thank our sponsors and and uh, they make this show possible and uh, coca-cola and your local coca-cola bottlers the people at colonial bank uh, great southern wood makers of osmos wood products alpha insurance rl ziegler the makers of ziegler meat products all pro auto parts John Deere and the Alabama John Deere dealers. Golden Flake uh, snack food. i also like to thank Dr. Martin and the administration for the part that they play in our program and, and uh, the support that they give us, our board of trustees and, and, uh, and their support, uh, our faculty and students that are so loyal to, to our efforts in the athletic department. I'd like to thank Hyman Wall and all the administrative staff and assistants that, that make my job so easy and and do all the work behind the scenes that don't get the credit that they deserve. Certainly our coaching staff that uh, has done a marvelous job with this football team this year and all the Auburn fans and people that love Auburn and, and um, I hope you were there yesterday. If, you're not, if you weren't, I hope that you could feel the emotion and the pride and the, the, the Auburn spirit moving uh, in, the, in the city and in that stadium yesterday on television. And thanks to Sue, and we'll be back in just Absolutely. one minute. <laughs> well, I tell you what, right now when I'm playing ball, um, and there's a ton of people in the stands yelling, yelling, and then you'll hear somebody say, War Eagle, or 
I'm from Auburn, and that catches my uh, uh, attention right there. I turn and look and I wave, and um, it's nice to know that people, um, whenever they leave Auburn or wherever they go, they still carry that Auburn spirit with them. There isn't much we agree on. I played football for Auburn, and he coached at Georgia, and I played at Georgia, and now he's coaching at Auburn. But there's a top-rated player that we both agree on, John Deere. I like a 30-horsepower John Deere 970. It's tough, but agile. I like this 55-horsepower 2355. It's got plenty of lugging power. One thing we both agree on, nothing, nothing runs, runs like, like a deer. deer. I don't know about that. I, I, <laughs> I tell you, the, uh, the band was terrific. Let me tell you, they were terrific. The opening great. of the, the, the anthem and <laughs> was something. I think everybody from Auburn had the game face on yesterday. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, uh, it, was, it was special. And, Lord, I'm glad to just be a small part of that deal yesterday. They come back with the no huddle offense and, and Coach Hall and Coach Whit and Coach Heron and Coach Dennis did a great job of getting our players ready for this no hunt and do a great job with it. They have a little old uh, kid sneak play here. And, <coughs> and they miss a field goal right And, right, it, and uh, that was a big play in the ball game because they had moved it down and got it in range. This is a great play right here. That's, that guy right there, Shane Washington, has made a big play in every big conference game against LSU. He had the punt return. Against Florida, he had yeah. the 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 uh the pass for the touchdown at the end of the game we, we're throwing to james joseph and james is another guy that's given us great clutch plays all year long there's ed king picking him up stacy down there taking it down to the one <coughs> after the long pass from reggie to to shane washington he overcame a five-yard and penalty as james joseph taking it in the end zone and uh, i tell you what that was probably the biggest improvement we've had is, is our short yardage out there there's shane right there but had the big punt return against Georgia. <coughs> big hit there by uh, John Wiley. Yes, I'm telling you, I've just never seen a guy that's impossible to cover, but it looks like as good pressure by Quentin Riggins on and and uh, and I think that uh, we had great coverage that time by by uh, Craig Ogletree and look at that, just a big play in the game. Quentin Riggins knocks the ball loose. We get it. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we get the, the turnover there and the big play on the, on the defense in the first drive. And this is probably the final play as, as we've had on the passing game ever at Auburn. Alexander got knocked out of bounds, four or five yards out of bounds. Reggie threw the ball down the boundary, and he came back in bounds and caught it. And he said he knew he could do it because <coughs> you all work on that. Right. And Reggie, we get it down to the, to the five here. Reggie had a great day yesterday and carried out our game plan to perfection and we kicked the field goal and now it's a seven point game and uh, and when Lyle goes goes past Al Del Greco with 43 watch it, watch field kick, goals. Watch the kick coverage here. Uh, we just are specialty teams and we struggle early in the year. Great play by Alvin Nash and has a big hits on the on the specialty teams and it, look at that. <laughs> Yeah. The little girl with the yeah. Alabama shirt on, one with the Auburn shirt on, standing sitting side by side at the ball game. And yeah, from everything I can understand, there was we had no incidents yesterday that would that would distract from the ball game. Great throw and catch by Herbert Casey and and uh, Reggie, and it's a big play in third down, critical situation. Come back, another great catch by Alexander Wright, and I think the pro scouts probably like what they saw yesterday in, in uh, Alexander Wright and nobody's out. Talent. Look at that guy right there. I mean, you got to... 130 get, yards <coughs> for him yesterday. The, uh, we take this one. This is Darrell Williams. Great play. Good blocking line of scrimmage. The offensive line is Rob Selby and, and making a block and Ed King and, and, uh, as, Chris Gray, uh, we lost, uh, Vic, Victor Hall got hurt. We took the tackle shirt off of Chris Gray and put him back in as a tight end. He makes a key block there to get, <coughs> excuse me, to get Electron in the end zone. Darrell Crawford comes up with an interception. And there's probably gonna be some controversy over that play right there. And it was a judgment call. 
but uh, we, we didn't get a fumble early in the ball game. It was also a ju judgment call, and, and uh, those things have a way of evening out. We, we you know, as uh, went allowed kicking another field goal, and I don't know what that made it, what, 27 to, to 10? Right. Right. Near interception right there. Alabama takes this one down the field with a great drive, very poised and, and executed, and they hit <coughs> Kevin Turner there, and they come back and hit Lamar and Russell with another one. And we're getting close, but we're not getting there, and the cover gave uh, Craig Sanderson, uh, Gary Hollingsworth, uh, has a play for the touchdown to, to Marco Battle, and, and Marco's had a great career at Alabama, and, and uh, just we come back offensively, <clears throat> still running and throwing and comes up with a big play in a key situation where we hit uh, Alexander Wright with a turn and Alabama holds us. We get a great kick from, from Richie Nail. <coughs> looks, like looks like a clip there. So those, those penalties, are, you know, we felt like some of them went against us and some of them probably went against Alabama, but those things have a way even and out. They run the draw. Quentin Riggins and, and uh, John Wiley. It seemed like John Wiley was in the way of that football all day yesterday. And uh, Doyle kicks it, makes it a seven-point game. 149 to go. 149 to go, and this is very critical play right here. And, of course, the people we got on the field, the people we got confidence in is not the best player, maybe, but the solid citizens. And there's Frank McIntosh, our backup quarterback, feels the, the onside kick. And we just right here take this one right down to run the clock out and end up kicking a field goal late. And I know a lot of people... Uh, <coughs> Casey was a little excited there. As they watch him, watch him run out of this one right here, just... You know, he has a way, and of course, he, was, he hasn't been healthy in the last month, but when he's healthy, he can run with the best of them. And, uh, we had a fifth of his career right there. We threw the ball there on, on third down, and we told Reggie it was, a, it was a safe play, one that we had to have some success with. And, this is the last play of the game, and Dennis Wallace goes up and makes the interception, and we run the clock out, and the game is history, and it was a hard-fought, well-played game. Both sides, uh, you know, did good things in the ball game, and Coach Curry and his staff have done a marvelous job with the Alabama football team this year, and they're going to the Sugar Bowl, and I wish them well, and uh, we're excited about going to the Hall of Fame Bowl and playing an outstanding Ohio State football. I'd like to mention our offensive staff that we scored more points against Alabama than we've ever scored. Coach Daniels and Callaway with the offensive line and Coach Sullivan, the quarterbacks, and Coach Casey, the running backs, and Blakeney, the wide receivers, and called the game. All right, we'll see you in Tampa. Thank you. Coach Dye's apparel provided by Brooks Brothers and the River J 